done, and by then I'll be running the whole thing, and it'll be too late. And welcome to plotting, ladies and gentlemen, here on Dog and Bo Come Correct. I knew, I knew, I knew. I was like, he'll, he'll pick the most vulnerable time to get that soundbite to hold over me for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, I that, not all of that. I, this, uh, I only caught the very last sentence. So you'll, uh, you'll but you didn't, you didn't catch the bit where I told all the listeners to go fuck themselves. Good, no, good boy. no, no, no. <laughs> um, hey, you, uh, here's something that's exciting, Duncan. Uh, here. Not. We're right, right here, here, right now. Are, yeah. are, are out here. What? Yeah, much like Us. Jesus Jones said, "Right here, right now." <laughs> reaching for that, I love it. Um, look, everybody's reaching for a little Jesus Jones, of course. <laughs> uh, but we are we are right next door to fall. Yes, and one might even say that fall has begun. It's and only just begun uh, to fall. Man, I that reminds me. I should watch fourteen oh eight pretty soon. Of course, you should. I mean, uh, just for that. Yeah, just that movie is so good. It's, it's such. Like, a, it's yeah. It's a it's a mediocre book, but a really good movie. Yeah, yeah. I I agree with that. I think it, it's a uh, one of the better haunted house movies or haunted yes. hotel room movies. Um, yes. But no, the the point being that with October right around the corner from here. Yes. Right here, right now. Yes, right that, here, right now. That I, I started working on my 31 days of Halloween. Oh, dude, I'm like, my list is almost done. And I'll tell you right now, you know what? I'm Because we do different lists. Yeah, we do. I, I, I do we, current I, year. We have never worked together before, ladies and gentlemen. I do yeah. not know his list. <laughs> yeah, like, I, like I, I only do movies that have come out this year. Uh-huh. Um, and that's like a sneaky way for me to catch up with all the shit that I haven't seen because I've been doing stuff for podcasts. Yeah. And, um... That list is usually contains like maybe one or two good movies, and the rest is pretty fucking bad. Um, this I, year though, yeah, yeah, my yeah. list is looking fucking great. Like, just like I'm not saying exceptional movies. I just think from what I'm hearing from the festivals and what I'm reading online, turns out there's a like kind of high standard of really good movies that I've not seen yet. That I will be watching this October, and I am very happy about that. As well, you should be. Yes, you know what yes, I just watched. Yourself. Uh, whoa, whoa. I, I th- this isn't going to show up in the conversation, or at least not from my end tonight. But I finally, speaking of good movies that I finally got around to that came out this year, finally saw Black Phone. Oh, it's a, oh, terrific! It movie. is a really, really, really good cinema horror movie. Yeah, absolutely. Like really across the board. Yeah, yeah, like acting good, story good. Like delivery good, yeah. yeah like, it's really crazy. I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's the best horror movie I've seen this year. But like as entertainment goes, and just like it doesn't really put a foot wrong. Like it's right. consistently, and it's Scott Derrickson, which you kind of should expect. Like that guy can direct. He so. can, but you know, I I watched that movie and then I watched Sinister not long after. Yeah, and I was like, you know what, Sinister is. There are things that are really, really good about Sinister, and I think it's yeah. a good movie, but mm. I also think it's really flawed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, I think, I don't like the ending of Sinister at yeah, all. Yeah, especially, um, yeah, the ending But, like, all the build-up to that ending is fucking great. Especially yeah. Creepy Boy that crawls backwards out of box for no reason. Um, I'm like, that visual there is just, that's nightmare fuel. And the yeah. lawnmower, obviously. The lawnmower is the thing. I, I watched. Well, yeah, the I watched that with my girlfriend recently, and yeah. and she was like, she was like looking up stuff on the phone about it, and uh, and said like somebody named this the scariest movie ever made. It was like, well, that sounds yeah. like bullshit. But no, she, it is universally recognized as in terms of decibels of screams when it's yeah. shown the scary, and I think it's just that scene. Yeah, right. But I, that's what we talked about. She was like, that mower scene was something. I was like, yeah. It definitely is that. That's the scene, and it doesn't show yeah. that much. It's it's a real Toby Hooper Texas Chainsaw kind of thing where it fools you into thinking you saw yeah, more than you did. It's a lot more gruesome. Yeah, it's a lot more gruesome. It, um, I think that's where his forty lies mm-hmm. for me. Like even I think Dexon's surprisingly good at packaging psychological terror in kind of mainstream cinema. Yeah. Um, like I think like Sinister's a good example of that. Like from from what you're saying, it's not particularly gruesome or even gory, but the the visuals themselves are very unsettling. Um, 
And he did, obviously, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which, once again, I don't really show you anything, but it's fucking creepy. The central performance helps. But then even the black phone, the, the stuff that's scary in that movie is him sitting upstairs in that mask, like Holding willing the bell, that, yeah. yeah, willing that boy to come up. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, to play the game. What game? Yeah, naughty boy. That that's is creepy. Terrifying. Yeah, like his whole like Ethan all his whole demeanor, his body language, everything just completely different, and it's, that is that is creepy. Yeah, it's really good. Um, but yeah, so I'm putting together that that 31 days list. And which is exciting because I know on the other side of that is the end of year catch up that I'll do. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, for the next two months, I'm just going to be watching horror movies that are a movies I haven't seen and really wanted to yep. movies that I want to watch again or movies that I need to watch because they're supposed to be really good and I'm assembling an end of year list. So that's all really exciting. Yeah. As, as one of those, one of those fortunate positions where you've, physically get to treat yourself um like i I, so yeah my my list is looking i'll tell you what i'm super excited for that hellraiser movie no shit man i'm i cannot wait cannot wait and even when there's the news drop today just confirming ain't no reboot here we're not like restarting or anything like that it's just like his standalone story that he's doing and his interpretation of the, the hellraiser world and i'm like Cool. Great. I didn't need an origin story. Although the the beauty of the beauty of Hellraiser is you never really get an origin story. The closest you got to it is some flashbacks in some of the later films, but never really needed that origin story until part four, um, which is one giant origin story which ends in a spaceship. Um, but like like up to that point, I like when Pinhead falls on the screw and then like yeah. spins around it. It's a uh, Pinhead X. Is that movie? And there's the android that's strangely yep. sexy and whose nipples fall off. Keep falling off for no yeah. reason at all. I love when I love when Pinhead picks up the sleeping bag with a girl in it and just yeah. fucking bars off a tree. Or or when yeah. David Cronenberg shows up to look at Pinhead in the coffin and you're like, for David no reason at all. In this movie? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I genuinely, genuinely can't wait. Yeah. And we are it's Hulu that's putting it out, which mm-hmm. means is Disney Plus in the UK, which... Right. Uh, did you watch Prey? I did. Yeah, yeah. we spoke about it. Oh, that. that's right. That's right. We talked about that one. Yeah, great Yeah, movie. yeah. Yeah, so, and it came out the same time as it came out in the US, which makes me think... Hell, but it does feel a wee bit weird and a wee bit icky to be like that. I'm watching the new Hellraiser movie on Disney Plus. Um, you know, like, it's kind of like, <laughs> one thing is not the same as the other. You know, like, <laughs> oh, we have such house to show... <laughs> and that's the only, that's the only problem with this is I'm gonna have to modify my pinhead voice. Um, make it make it this one. Oh, hello. we have such stats to show you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like <laughs> hey, my- Goofy, why is, <laughs> why are all those pins sticking in your face? <laughs> um, but like it, it does that. Like it, I'm an angel the- to some, a demon to <laughs> others. <laughs> you know what also looks pretty good. Well, like, even though it's just a complete American ripoff of The Ring, uh-huh. um, that movie Smile. Yeah, I'm I'm down for it. I like it, it's it blatantly The Ring. It's blatantly The Ring. It's like that. Like the someone smiles at you, then seven days later you die, and I'm like, right. does it have to be seven days? Can we move it? What about six? Six and a half? Does it have to be seven? Did we get a phone call here? Um, <laughs> right. you know, and, then, like, and then someone fa- calls you, and then you start smiling. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, but that looks good. You know the one that I... Uh, this will upset people. You know the one that I could not give a tiny rat's ass about? Go on. That's the new Halloween movie. Oh, I don't care about that. Yeah, which, once again, is like is is coming to streaming. It's coming to the Peacock yeah. the same day as it's going to theaters. I, I, saw, I saw it on Peacock. Uh, I saw that last one, Hall- Halloween Ends on Peacock. Yeah, and I'm glad that I didn't go to the theater for it. Cause well, you 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 will, you will be able to do that again. You, I, be able to do you that. know what? I don't think I will, Duncan. You got to do that. I think I think gotta gotta, I will wait until someone tells we have me to talk like, about. It. No, really, you we have just... to talk about it. We have to talk about uh... you. There's no way, like, because all that's going to happen is you're going to have a serious case of FOMO when I'm sitting here talking about how how great the entertainment value of the train 
fucking crash in slow motion that that movie's going to be. Uh, yeah, all right. I mean, well, the fact it... that anyone's excited, the fact that anyone's excited about this is is fucking mind blowing. Like, 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 yeah, we're finally getting. Old old woman strode facing off against Michael Myers, who apparently can lift three firemen on a pike. Like, see if this scene isn't him just walking in and snapping her in half and then putting her in the waste disposal. I don't want to watch this fucking movie. I'll tell you the the one that made me not want to watch this fucking movie was when they had the shot of uh Michael Myers stabbing her with a a, a knitting needle, and yeah. the internet for like two hours was like. Oh my god, you guys! It's yeah. just like when she stabbed him with a knitting needle, but it's yeah, this li- time. I'm like, go I fuck literally yourself. That, I, I posted, I posted on my Facebook group page. I was like that. I was like, finally, it's only taken fifty years to pay off this. <laughs> like, like that. And then I, I, I did, it, I, I did my my uh, clever and witty hashtag at the bottom, which is hashtag patience dies tonight um, oh, because God. I am all out of patience I'm like just get this you know what I actually can't wait till it's gone and then yeah. we can put it behind us and move on and we can reboot it again um, yeah but inevitable of course, inevitable. of course. But I, it, John Carpenter, I think, said all. But you know, when someone asked him, "Do you think this would be the last one?" He's like, "Well, as long as they make money, no." Yeah, and like that. That's why you go to Big JC. Big JC fucking calls it like he sees it. And every time another movie gets made, a check falls in his hand. That's and that's that is all the, the quote. movies that keep yeah. making them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every I, time they make one of those movies, I put out my hand and a check falls in it. Yeah, John Carpenter. Is punk rock as hell and remains like, so. Yeah. Uh, I saw I saw an interview with him. It was like one of these magazine interview things, and by the end of it, I was just like, "That dude has never changed and still doesn't give a fuck." And yeah. that's kind of awesome. It's the beauty of John Carpenter is that yeah. he didn't give a fuck when he started. Yeah, he he didn't really give a fuck at it. Like there was I think that the clo- we spoke about it. Well, the closest he got to Starman. Starman and the thing, I think the thing and Starman yeah. both kind of bruised him because he thought both of those were good movies. Yeah. And he was right. Yeah. And, oh, I mean, like, time, like, the, one of those things that history has only proved John Carpenter yeah. right, like, <laughs> many times over. That's like, why like, I, gotta like, wait, I gotta wait like 10 years and go back to Escape from LA because I think that movie kind of sucks. And I need to yeah. go back to it because I'll be like, oh, right. Okay. He was just. Yeah. Way like, ahead. Carpenter knew. Uh, it's like, it's like all... Bowie. It's like. It, yeah. Bowie albums in in his later years never yeah. sounded good to me, but it's because I'm just not on his level. Yeah, he, like he's, he's always like he was like a decade ahead. Yeah, he, he literally was it. I don't know if you remember this, but he time traveled in Twin Peaks and became a kettle. So I mean, this is like <laughs> well, at this point, like you could be anywhere. What year is it? Yeah. Uh, but like the no, he's no, like as the kind as the thing I love about him, and I think the the the, the interesting thing to think about is how different his career would have been if both The Thing and Starman had been fucking huge. If it had hit, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we, I don't know if we would have had They Live. I don't, you know, I don't think They Live exists in a world where that happens. You know what I mean? And that's kind of, that level, I mean, that's not, it's not an amazing movie by any stretch of imagination, but like, you want to talk about cultural significance? I see They Live like, memed or quoted almost fucking daily for like the last five years, so without big trouble in Little China, there is no Mortal Combat. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, all these things do not exist in a world where John Carpenter doesn't like fail. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's weird to think about, it, but it, it is. And I, you know, he he said somewhere that he he might be ready to do another movie. It's like great, do don't, but don't do it unless you want to. Yeah, because you only do you, what you want to do. Right, you have earned the right to not do shit again. Like yeah. play, play your destiny, and <laughs> you know, Madden or whatever you're doing, and yeah. smoke cigarettes and compose music. And if that's what how you want to spend your remaining years, you, you fucking earned it. Right, you've earned that. You've um, earned it, which is like is so mind blown because there's Argento just announced he's doing another movie. Yeah. Like, so he's got these ones coming out now, and he's like, "Yeah, we're shooting in Paris next year. I'm remaking a a Mexican crime thriller." And I'm like that. 
just keep him making movies. I don't even care if they're great. Yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah, well, I, just, yeah, I, I love the idea of Argento being out there just doing shit. Right, yeah. and he fucking he's eighty odd. He's just out there just making stuff happen. I'm cool with that. Like, there's a certain level where these guys get to, where to me they shouldn't have to they shouldn't have to battle to get money. Like, if they want to make if they really are passionate and they want to make a movie, some fucking rich billionaire should give them the money and let them do it. Yeah, we look, Jason Bloom just needs to hand John Carpenter a check for ten million dollars and, and say that's like just. To him. Right, yeah. just it's nothing to him. Just bring us whatever you whatever you do. We'll we'll take care yeah. of it. Well, the marketing alone on that. Yeah, the if master just, of horror like, returns yeah. to his first movie in however many years. Over a decade. Yeah, two thousand and eight was the award. Yeah, from the, from so the director I mean? like, of Halloween, The Fog, <laughs> The Thing, Big Trouble in Little China, Escape, Escape from, from LA. New York. Or, no, yeah, Escape you like the list. The list, like you just like, and you know what you do? You know what you do? Like you just have the logos and the original fonts just boom yeah. on the screen, and you're just like, oh my! In fact, you don't even show any footage of the new one. You just show fucking highlight reel of that man's career. Yeah. And if you're not excited to see that movie, you're not alive. And then the, you end the the trailer with the title of the new movie and whatever yeah. the treatment is going to be, and mm -hmm. that's it. That's John it. Carpenter's you know, crazy days or whatever yeah. the hell you call it. And weird synth noise that he's playing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. Like, 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 <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You know, and yeah. then oh, you're... What we're doing here. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need. That's yeah. all we need. And then, like Halloween 2024. And you're like, yeah. yes. I, now I have a reason to live. I'm Finally. there. Like opening day. The, like, yeah. the, like, I don't know if Jason, I'm going to, I'm going to go out in a while. I don't think Jason Blum listens to this, but if he does, make that happen. Yeah. We've just made you money. Right. Absolutely. You just, again, just hand him a check for 10 million. Tell him like, whatever you want to do, go with God. Yeah. And, and once it's done, bring it to me and I will, it, maybe it launches on streaming. Maybe, maybe we make the deal that way and we all make a bunch yeah. of money and we walk away from the deal like that. Maybe we do it simultaneous in theaters, whatever. If it's really good, we'll definitely do it in theater. So we got this. Yeah. I got, I got a whole distribution arm to take care of this. Yeah. You just go make the weirdest, scariest movie you can. Yeah. Or, so, or someone let him make his Western. That's yeah. all he's ever wanted to like. Someone just make, let him make his Western. I'm totally fine with that. If if his last movie that there's something kind of elegiac about that of like yeah. his last movie for Carpenter to ride off into the sunset metaphorically by making the western that he's always wanted to yeah. make. Yeah, and yeah. and if you watch Vampires, that is right that's next door to the the western. Literally, he make. why he made it. That's yeah. literally why he made it. He said he was not invested in the the vampire story at all. He thought this is as close as I'm going to get to making a western. So I'm in. Um, yeah. and I I I like that movie more than I should. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of with you. It's not great, but there are things I like about it. And and Ghost of Mars is a western, really. And a hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> You know, there. <laughs> that's another thing that it's like. Eh, this movie isn't very good, but also I see, I see why Carpenter make it be made it because mm -hmm. it's kind of the movie he wants to make. Yeah, with all of the trappings that he has to put in a movie to get a movie. <laughs> yeah, made. It's, it's kind of it's kind of the movie he wants to make. It just so happens to have Ice Cube in it. <laughs> What, what was this? Desolation Jones? Is that his name? In there? Desolation Williams. Desolation Williams. I mean, that's As pretty one good. of the... Oh, no. It's one I of the it. worst names ever. I, if I and ever everyone's had... walking a bit like, see if you're a criminal, right? See if you're a, a, like a fugitive, a well-known criminal. You don't have a nickname which has so many syllables in it. Uh-huh. Well, that you call him Desi. Yeah, like, Wait, on, you call him Death. death. No, that's what you call him. Or you, know, you just call him De 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 Desolation Williams. What, what was the what's the bit from he You have been visited by the Grim Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just watched that recently. Oh, dude, let's let's we're we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. And we're like uh, I'm like every fiber of my being is trying to make it that that recording isn't gonna go on 15 hours. Um, have you watched LA Takedown yet? Hey, no. That's the conversation that's going to be the long one. Really? Oh, oh yes. Do you know what that movie is? No. It is Heat 
version one. It is same character names in some cases. Well, yeah, because but, but yeah, but he, he, his script for Heat was written before he made Thief. Yeah, and so he yeah, made like, so, he yeah, made, so he made like it, all right, and that is a hundred percent Heat. Could I could very well believe that? Could very well believe that. It, yeah, it's gonna blow your mind. It it it's I can't it's wait. crazy when you watch that and you're like. Oh, he just remade his own movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he said that he like he literally he had this script, and it was there. He had his story in yeah. his script, and it was there, and he just couldn't get it made. Um, like the way he wanted to, the way he visioned it. So he went off and did Thief, and like, well, he loads of movies through the eighties, and he basically did that to build the cachet of credibility. Yeah. So. So he could eventually, so he could eventually get to the point where he could get both fucking Al Pacino and Robert De Niro in his fucking movie, and like to me, that's like, you know what that is? That's like, that's like, I, it's the, it's the what the last podcast talk about when they talk about Ted Bundy of like, like Ted Bundy goes away to university and studies psychology so he can pass himself off as a better psychopath. Yeah. You know, like that. He's like, he's like, it's like the, the A-level where he actually goes away and gets the training to be better at the fucking killing. And that's literally what you, yeah, Michael Mann's like that. I, you know, I, 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 not until I'm at the level that I can get arguably the two greatest actors of all time. Not only the greatest actors of all time, but to share the same screen. I think this was only the second time in movie history they'd actually been. In fact, it might be the first time they actually shared a scene. I think it's, yeah, because they were in Godfather 2 together, but they don't have any scenes together. Yeah, that's right. So, the, so like, that's it. Like, and that's, that's how much he is fucking flexing in that movie. Like, it is fucking ridiculous. When you watch LA Takedown and you watch that coffee shop scene... Yep. Done with television actors, knowing yep. that a few years later it's going to be De Niro <laughs> Pacino <laughs> delivering the exact same lines, Duncan. Oh. Where you know, it, like, imagine just a team. Imagine if you would cast me in that movie, where I'm like, you know, you see me coming around that corner, I'm going to have to take you down. Yeah, and and somebody being like, yeah, that's good enough. We got it. We got to go. Like yeah. we got, we got eight 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 scenes we gotta get done today, and that's as good as it's gonna get. As opposed to the movie where it's like, just yeah. roll the cameras, let this yeah. thing happen, and we'll do this as many times as it takes yeah. as many. And which I don't know how many how many takes that scene. Look, probably oh not god, many. you don't? I, I don't know. You like as as De Niro and Pacino, right? That's why maybe it's just like you just. You just point the camera at them and let them do their thing, and you get in two or three eggs. But yeah, it's it's. I, I, think, I can't yeah, wait for you to say. I can't I, wait to I, have I that conversation. Well. It's so I cannot good. wait. It, it's fucking crazy. When I was watching, I, like I, it, it was. I kept doing like the, ee, ee, ee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like like you squint <laughs> just a little bit, and the guy. <laughs> The guy in the lead is kind of doing a half ass Pacino impression. Oh, no. So that you're like, I I get it. Like, I understand why, what Michael Mann is going for. And it's not bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. as, I mean, this is a conversation we'll have later. But as TV movies go, it's pretty good. But it's mm. still a TV movie. Yeah. And, and then Heat is like this three hour monolith oh, to crime cinema. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But it, it's it's bananas, man. It, it it blew my mind because I knew I had heard like oh yeah it's kind of his first pass at heat and I was like okay well it'll it'll have it'll be similar yeah and it's like oh no oh no it's the same <laughs> it's it's the same movie only like half as much and I shocking shocking I can't movie. wait no I can't wait um, yeah anyway uh, speaking of movies we should probably oh, talk about some movies good we've and been bad. recording for ages and we have not done eh, anything that we usually do on this show you know sometimes you just want to have a little fun <laughs> uh, do you have anything loaded anything you want to talk about uh, yeah well, I, I just went to see it for the second time and I'm like super high on that bodies 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 that new A24 movie I need to see that I'm really high on it and I think I understand like, this is the thing this is the thing. Well, here's the thing. If you don't like it, I a hundred percent understand. In fact, I wouldn't even begin to talk you around because you. The chances are you hate the characters. Uh huh. And maybe, depending on 
your 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 particular view on things, you didn't like the very end. To me, the the characters, the whole setup is incredibly smart. And is 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 specifically playing with the the old kind of murder mystery, all the you know, all the people assemble in a house and then they all start dying one at a time scenario. It's not I think it was like I think a lot of people thought it was a slasher. It's not a fucking slasher movie. Um but instead of the characters being you know, like, oh, if you think of something like Clue, oh, the general, oh, the doctor, oh, he's the lawyer. Um, in the case of this one, it's all entitled narcissistic, like teens. So, like, and they all, they all, and that's what I think. That's why people don't like it. I think it, at some ways, it cuts too close to the bone with some people, and with other ways, it is holding a mirror up to some of the more obnoxious and repugnant parts. Of society that we have to digest on a daily basis, um, but I thought it, I thought it was wickedly funny. Um, I think the very end is borderline genius, um, and, uh, and yeah, it's just got a, it's got a, it's got a swagger about it. It's got a real like attitude and swagger and visual style that I kind of love. Um, so yeah, I, I saw it, uh, I, I saw it with Baz, um, and I, I said to Baz before we went there, I was like, there's a good chance you're going to fucking hate this movie. Um, and he came out and he was like, I love this. And I was like, oh, well, right. So like, I, I'm finding it very difficult to place who is going to like and who's going to dislike it. Um, but I believe it shall be on your uh, streaming services, your digital streaming services, middle of next month. So... Uh, you ain't got long to wait if you ain't seen it at the cinema. Yeah, yeah. I, here lately, uh, as we'll talk about in a minute, most of my cinema viewing has been with, you know, one or more of the kids. Yeah. And, um, but I'll, I'll see it. I'm looking forward to it. Like, it's an A24 film, and, you know, there is an A24 movie that is almost certainly going to top my list this year. And, mm. um, Spoilers. There's been an a, there's been an A twenty four movie out almost every month this year. Yeah, which um, is fucking nuts. <laughs> like, yeah, you think about it, it is not A twenty four has put out more genre movies this year than Blumhouse, about three times over. Yeah, but I, I mean, look, let, let's be real about Blumhouse. Um, Blumhouse in one year, not that long ago had a horror movie out every month. I th I think Jason Blum is trying to spread his wings on. I think to... he's trying to franchise. I think is what I think he's already he's desperately trying to get his hands on that Friday the thirteenth franchise. He's been all but pitching for Nightmare on Elm Street. He's already locked in um Exorcist. In fact we're talking about things I couldn't give a tiny fuck about um, let's talk about The Strangers, uh, and let's talk about the fact that they announced Rennie Harlan was going to be doing two sequels, and then yesterday, oh, he's just going to remake the first one, then do two sequels. Yeah, yeah. I, Three movies. I'll tell you what, having just recently watched Devil's Pass, also directed by Rennie Harlan, that will not make you excited to see another Rennie Harlan movie. That's he really, he really, sure. he really, like, went downhill pretty fucking fast after that and he's he made, well, speaking of exorcist he made one of those exorcist movies yeah and it yeah. is was dominion awful. yeah yeah, yeah it's like one of the Whoa. ones i can't remember he's the one that did the reshoot wasn't he he's yeah. the one that did the second version of the the movie like with the, half the same cast and half not um but i think pazuzu gets hadoukened at the end um which <laughs> Hadouken. I, I think she, I think the demon I, runs all over corridor, and I think she gets a holy hadouken, um, like, <laughs> put down. Um, so it's just yeah, but the fact that, like the fact that I, I could kind of get my head around them saying we're doing another sequel. I like that second one. I thought that second one was a ton of fun because it's fuck all like that first movie, which is just not not good. Um, but then they're like, yeah, he's making two. And I was like, right, we're being a bit presumptuous here. And then they're like, actually, he's remaking the original and then doing two. And I was like, and it makes me think, like, I just I imagine the conversation being right now. We've killed off the three characters in the mm -hmm. second movie. 
Well, maybe the main guy is badly burned, but we've pretty much killed him off. A very badly Har- burned. <laughs> a very badly burned. Uh, and you, Rennie Harlan, are our only hope to make a sequel. And Rennie's like that. I've Listen, I've got in the bag. I can continue this franchise. And then in the month that it's taken to make that announcement, is he's been pitching, 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 pitching. And they've been like, all these ideas are awful. All those, right, reboot. Um, yeah, there are too many the- bad ideas to go with just one movie, Duncan. Yeah, like let's, let's reboot it. So yeah, so we're getting three, and I don't understand. And then, but here's the thing: I hear that, and I'm just like, Ugh. but then I hear that Ty West has got Pearl coming out, and he's like A twenty four. I've completely greenlit, and it's definitely going to happen. Maxine's happening next year, mm-hmm. and I am. I'm not even seen Pearl yet, and I am all in. I'm like, yeah, just keep giving him money, right? That, but that's because X is real damn good. Yeah, Pearl looks like is going to be real damn good as well. Yeah. So, um, and the fact is another it's another Ty West movie and a different time frame again with Mia Goth who's been fucking crushing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just like that's that's the thing. I love the fact that E24's like first attempt at doing a franchise is yeah, let's just like let's go with Ty West, let him make his movie in the 70s and then jump back what, 50, 60 years before it make his prequel movie, and then let's just jump a decade into the 80s, motherfucker, and you know it's a Ty West 80s, right? Mm-hmm. So it ain't going to be Stranger Thing 80s or anything like that. It's going to be gray. it's going gonna, it's gonna to look, It's gonna, there's going to be a lot of beige. Um, it's not a lot of neon, a lot of beige. Um, it's going to be um, more It Follows than Stranger Things. A hundred percent, and I'm like, yes, yes, Like, let's just keep doing this experiment and then Rennie Harlan's like, but I've got three movies. And I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck a bit, you, Rennie. <laughs> <laughs> but what yeah, about up. these movies that I have <laughs> I have got <laughs> good ideas for, dear strangers? Just get the fuck out of my house, Rainy. Um But so, yeah. you have my keys. <laughs> I'm fucking get your keys out of there. Um, I will so, yeah, take I this saw... snowmobile. <laughs> He's getting a little bit like uh, that character from uh, Goldmember. It's uh, close. Sh- yeah, uh, uh, shh. Smoking a, I can't remember what he said, smoking a pancake. Yeah, yeah. smoking a pancake. Um, but yeah, so Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is a movie that I saw that, I'll, like I said, I saw it second time and I really fucking liked it. I, so. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, a lot of, yeah, as much as I hate Pete Davidson, the thing that I'm holding out hope for is that he is murdered in the movie and that'll make me happy. Um, don't spoil it. I just, I want it to happen organically. Um, I'll tell you, here's my good thing, Duncan. And it's not a movie. You're breaking it's, the rules, then. You're I, literally breaking the rules. It's a movie we bring here. We don't like it. Well, you did. If you're about to see it's Mike Flanagan's new TV show, I'm going to fucking leave. Because I'm yeah. about three TV shows behind what he's releasing. He's got a movie and a TV show coming out this year or something. I don't know. Don't be silly, Duncan. I want to tell you all about a new pair of running shoes. Uh, ah, nice. No, 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 no. Um... No, this is the the new series that Shutter is running. The hundred and one scariest uh, moments. Oh yeah, the, the, where they just ripped off the Bravo thing. Yeah, right. Thank goodness someone did because Bravo certainly wasn't going to do it again. And well, I Bravo love doesn't that exist shit. anymore. Right. Uh, yeah, I, like the, enough time has passed now. Yeah, that we can do this. They're two episodes deep. I've seen them yep. both. the The talking heads that they've got are good. Yep. Uh, have you watched these? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. So it's I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll like see when it's finished. I'll watch all yeah. as one. Um, so. but it's it's people like uh like Rebecca McKendry, Carolyn mm-hmm. XL, uh Tony Todd, Mike Flanagan. Speaking of, nice. um, you know, uh, a couple of Fango writers, you know, stuff like that. Like people that if you if you are deep into horror nerd shit, you will recognize them. Yeah, and um, and I I love a list. I love a list of movies. Like nothing makes me happier than yeah. here. Hey, have you seen this? You're uh, literally talking to a guy that dedicates his entire summer to lists. Right, so yeah, right. So I I know, and I like the fact that we're we're getting this update so mm. that it can include all the movies that have come since that Bravo show. Yeah, and, like 
arguably last decade was the best decade for horror cinema ever so argument to be made for sure and so it's fun to see them be like oh uh, how about this scene from the witch and how about this scene from it follows and how about this scene from dr Sleep? and yeah. it's like oh yeah you're right those are fucking great moments in those <laughs> yeah. movies yeah this is really good <laughs> yeah and but also coupled with that you know um here's some old hammer stuff and here's mm. the stuff from the eighties that you're going to love. And, you know, it, it, hearing Tony Todd talk about having the bees in his mouth and candy man and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, this is exactly what I want for this time of year. And the fact yeah. that they're doing like eight episodes, they're doing one a week up until the week of Halloween. Yeah. It's like, great. This is such Small a move. good idea. Yeah. I'm so glad they're doing it. It's exactly what I want it to be. It doesn't, like it's not going to blow your mind or anything. Nobody's like, and we're throwing out all the movies from before <laughs> and you know, no one's going to talk about the exorcist. Yeah. Um, it's only movies beginning with the letter P right. Yeah. There's no asinine rules like a summer series. It's uh, yeah. Uh, oh, we're dead here. Well, we're dead here. This is roast <laughs> mode. This is going to roast mode. Yeah. Oh, somebody check the fire extinguishers. Cause Duncan's been burned. Um, <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> oh, so tired and old, Duncan. If it makes um, you feel any better, I said in a, a meeting, a team meeting, uh, a work team meeting, um, so like two days ago, what I meant to say is, uh, stick a fork in me, I'm done. <laughs> uh, and what I got came out my mouth was, stick a finger in me, I'm done. And then I was like, <laughs> I, th I meant fork, I meant fork, uh, and everyone just went deathly quiet. Oh, um, I can't believe no one laughed at that. I would have I no, lost my shit. No. Yeah, I work with relatively dull people. Um, Still grieving for the queen, no doubt. Uh, don't, don't do it, honestly. It's <laughs> like, well, I, I get a day off. I was like, Monday, everything's closed, so I'm off on Monday. Great. Yeah. At least that yes. old lady could do something. Yeah. yeah. The, the 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 billions this country has spent on her has merited that one day off work. Right. Um so yeah. Uh but yeah, uh, so yeah. I'm really loving the the shutter thing. I think it's very cool. I mean, shutter has been we we've talked about the the that service a number of times and yep. some of the output's great, some of it's not so great, but you know, it's Halloween, and so they're doing it right where it's like, here's a premiere. Here's something Here's something else that you might like. Here's this series. Yeah. Like, they were just shoving Halloween down your fucking throat, and I'm just deep-throating it all. Just, I, I, I give it to well, me, Well, I think both the and, like, Netflix as well. Netflix have been very smart this year. Like, their curated content in um, October is hitting all manner of sweet spots and all manner of demographics as well. So you're getting, they've got that Jeffrey Dahmer documentary coming out finally. Uh, we're getting to Dahmer, that's dropping in there. There's a couple of things for the kids. There's that um, Jordan Peele produced um, like a claymation horror thing, which is coming out, which is done by the guy that did um, fucking uh, Nightmare God. Before Christmas. Oh, oh, Henry Selleck. Oh, yeah, Nightmare yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, we were yeah, getting like... Phil Tippett to do some other weird shit. No, 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 no. He's like, and that's on my list for 31 of October and I can't wait. Uh, but oh, like, so, so that's weird. that's in there. But then the 25th, the 26th, the 27th and 28th of October, four nights in a row, two episodes each night, uh, Cabinet of Curiosities by Guillermo del Toro. Oh, where he's yeah, handpicked, yeah. handpicked eight directors, um, and the, it's an anthology. But you get two episodes a night, every single night. Cool. One of those directors is the director of The Empty Man. Oh no shit! Yeah, so he's got a whole thing, and I, I, I really like that. Movie. I know you did. I, a lot of people yeah. did. It kind of, it didn't really land for me, but I get it. Yeah. Um. So he's he's like he's got carte blanche to make his own short. Guillermo del Toro giving them the rubber stamp seal of approval. Give me that. So, like, even like that's what I'm saying. That like they seem to be smarter about how they're putting things together. The one that hasn't done it this year, and I'm quite thankful they haven't, is Amazon. Amazon seems to have dropped the ball. They've probably spent all their money on that Lord of the Rings TV show that they can't really do. Like, we can't market anything else for the right. next six years. Everything uh, is in this show. Yeah. It costs one billion, right? How much did we it cost? Everything. 
I'm sorry. Everything. 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 <laughs> so they're not advertising anything, um, which means I don't have to sit through some of those Blumhouse originals like I had to do for the previous two years, mm. which were excruciatingly bad. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. Dude, everything's uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I don't know what else Hulu is rolling out. Quite frankly, nothing if is fine as long as that Hellraiser. David Bruckner Hellraiser joint. Drops. Literally, all they need to they literally yeah. the they have whipped out their pin laden veiny cock on the table. Um, the, and, and uh, like, what, what's her name? Jamie Clayton, the the yeah. actress playing Pinhead. I'm like, looks awesome. Oh, looks amazing. Yeah. Um, I like all I'd the like, missing parts of flesh and sinew and yeah, stuff. Like the, she's she's like, like got actually the emblem like in her throat. Yeah. Um, I think even the uh, they teased the, the image of the updated uh, Le Marchand box, uh, the Le Mans configuration. It looks cool. I'm in for it. Like the the the, bo the bottom line is, I have been waiting. For considerable time for a reputable director mm -hmm. to get his hands on this this is of all the franchises this is the one that feels like it should be a no-brainer feels like it should be really easy to fucking do but has been consistently fucked up yeah um and, like, and like colossally hand to hand it to the next person to fuck up um and the vigil so, is yeah. really good if you haven't seen Bruckner's last movie the vigil yeah real good real good movie. i did see the vigil he didn't do the vigil you're getting confused who am i what did he do then what am i uh, he did oh, the, the night house the night house sorry yeah i'm thinking and of the before guy who the night house Firestar. before the night house he did the ritual which is what yeah, you're thinking yeah, about yeah, yeah. no so I, both I those thinking, movies are fucking great i was thinking about the dude the dude who did the vigil did that fire starter remake which really which is on my it. list but i heard it's not very good <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the face everyone seems to make when they when they get rid of it. It's, oh, see what I'm saying? I have to do some movies that are not going to be good. I but have to do that. Let's call it a palate cleanser. Yes. Um, yes. Can't have too much of a good thing. That's what, how you get diabetes. Speaking, of, yeah. Speaking of uh, too much of a good thing, what's your bad movie? It's not bad, but I don't know what I. Part of me feels like in time its charm will grow on me more. I've just dropped a, a review for a movie that Arrow are about to put out. They're going to put out in November. It played Fright Fest called Incredible But True. It's the new movie by the guy that did Rubber. Oh, uh, guess. Quentin. Quentin. Yes, you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Quentin. Yeah, yeah. Frenchy McFrenchman. Um, I, like, I think it's Canadian. Frenchy Muck Frenchman. Right. Um, so it's his new movie, and it's uh it's it's about time travel. Let me set the premise up for you here. Um, it's short as well. It's an hour and fifteen minutes. So, okay. right, it's a call that you want to take. Right. Um, it's a like a couple buy a house. And when they're buying the house, the guy that's well, they see a house, and it's a it's a relatively big house, and they're unsure if they want to buy it, but the the guy who's selling it to them is very animated and keeps telling them that this house is incredible and need to buy it. And he eventually reveals the secret. Mm -hmm. And the secret to this house is that it has a trap door in the basement, which has a set of ladders that when you go down, it actually brings you down into the roof of the house. Okay. It zaps you 12 hours in the future. Okay. So by crawling through the space, you go 12 hours into the future. I'm with you. And you... Um, you de-age three days every time you do it. So you get younger but move ahead in time? Yes. Okay. You move ahead by 12 hours but age backwards three days. Okay. All right. Right. That's the background. The real movie is actually about the human condition for... Or the fear of aging and the lengths that people will go to to de-age themselves. Okay, and it is is he incredibly smart concept? It's a very very witty script. Doesn't completely hang together, but some of the stuff that it does is very very smart. And it's also a comedy. It's like it, it is a farce comedy. Yeah. It's a surrealist farce comedy. Um, like all his work. Mm -hmm. uh, like you've ever seen like Deerskin? You know, it's that sort of kind of farcical comedy. Um, 
And it's, it's it, I wanted to love it while I was watching it because it was ticking so many boxes. It just kind of, I think it loses its way a little bit in the middle or it comes back to repeat similar jokes over and over again. Um, almost in a kind of Pink Panther way, but it doesn't land it. Um, and the next time the joke came around, it was a bit more groany, and then the next time it was a bit more groany. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. Definitely worth short. Definitely worth checking out. And I wanted to love it. And I think there's so much cleverness about the movie, but I don't think it has a mark. Uh, and just to correct myself, uh, Quentin Dupuy is yes. uh, is actually French. I, for some reason, I thought he was was from Quebec, but that is not the case. I, um, that's why I called him Frenchy my Frenchman. You were right. I was wrong. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, <laughs> like, right, Duncan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I like him. Uh, I thought yeah. Rubber in particular. I really enjoyed that. Mm. Um, did you ever see Deerskin? I did not. I didn't. No, you should check it out. Yeah. It's, it's about what a was... guy. It's, a, it's about a guy that gets obsessed with a Deerskin jacket and the cost of it, mm. uh, which causes him to basically become a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right it's 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 really it's really bizarre all this stuff's really bizarre what was the one with the bug the big the big fly you oh know what I'm talking fuck. About? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah and i can't think of the name of it but i enjoyed that we need to fact check this bull we can't we can't uh, leave this hanging for our listeners we need to we need to make it sound like we always know what we're talking about right right i just do so do, do so little editing on this show that it's <laughs> inevitably going to sound like yeah. uh like, like we're really good at smart. padding um, for time though we're experts at padding for there you go mandiblaze mandibla and mandiblaze Mandible. um, but yeah mandibles is the one about a yeah. giant a giant bug in the the back seat of a car or the yeah. the the boot of a car la boot la boot das boot <laughs> das boot das uh, boot <laughs> um, right come on what's your bad oh okay so speaking of going to see uh movies with the kids um i i saw that last jurassic world movie oh yeah my my uh my wife took my daughter to see it and he came in and uh, i was like that. i was like how was it and my daughter was like oh dad it was really 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 good and i looked over my shoulder to my wife and she uh -huh. was like dog shit yeah. <laughs> she fucking hated it here is the dirty secret of the Jurassic Park series mm. is that there's one good movie. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. The first er, one. Yeah, absolutely. The the first Jurassic Park, amazing. Everything yeah. after that, bad to one degree or another. Yes. And they all have they all have elements that I like, but it's once it's like a it's like a pebble in a pond, you know, in terms of like a huge body of water here that kind of fucking sucks, and one little pebble that I enjoy. The biggest problem with Dominion is that um it doesn't really know what to do with all the characters in it. Like it, it's, it's literally what my wife said. You're like verbatim. She says there's like about three or four stories going on, and it's like towards the end they're like, oh yeah, we need to, we need to, we need to bring these characters together for dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what she said. She was like that. She was like, there's too many stories, and I just couldn't care about any of them. Yeah. It. And there's also that remember Barry's problem. <laughs> Maybe. Right, where it's like, hey, remember that can of shaving cream from the first movie? That's going to be uh, a big deal in this movie, and it's uh, like, I don't, I don't need any of it. And also, but what about the what about the knitting needle that like right. Michael Myers stuff? <laughs> also, how about you focus on dinosaurs and not a bunch of prehistoric bugs, which uh. is half of what the movie is about? Is these like prehistoric locusts that are eating things up, and it's like. I I get this as sort of a science run amok metaphor, but that's what all of these movies are. Yeah. And just let it like just don't don't have a world ending thing. Yeah. Just make it a relatively small story with characters that you like threatened and I'm going to be there for it. And that's yeah. what makes the original so good is that 
It's on an island. It's it's on an island. The that's literally in the olden days, Bo. That's how you made something big but self-contained. Yeah. You've like look at Kong. Um, the the whole way like Kong works is because it's on an island to begin with. Um, you know, it's it's, it's simple. It really is surprisingly simple yeah. to do that. But no, we're in a we're in a world now. And I don't want to. I don't want to blame the movies that you like, but Marvel has a lot. Of, in fact, yeah, yeah. comic book movies in general have a lot to answer for this. When people go to the cinema now to see a blockbuster movie, the world has to end or be on the threat of ending. When they forget that the movie that kicked off the whole blockbuster thing is Jaws, yeah, a movie where three people on a boat hunt a shark. I mean, it's like <laughs> yeah. I, and, I mean, you're not wrong. If only Marvel movies were doing this, it would be fine. Because, hey, it's yeah. a comic book Everyone's movie. doing it. Yeah, everyone's. Right. Like, they've got carte blanche to do it because... Right. That's kind of what those movies are about. Superheroes are supposed to protect the world. You know, it gets to that point where you build it up. But, yeah, I'm with you. Like, at this point, like, they physically destroyed the island in the last movie. So can't there's, go back there, Bo. <laughs> there's some clone girl that I totally forgot about being in the series, and that's a yes. big deal in this movie, also. <sighs> and I'm like, I can't, I don't. It's a bunch of bugs there, and this yeah. clone running around, and all I want to see is Jeff Goldblum being like, uh, "Dinosaurs, ooh, you know, that's <laughs> yeah. all I want to see." Yeah, and it's really frustrating. It's a bad movie, and but uh, the same thing happened to me where uh, the boy. At, at the end of the movie, was like that was great. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, Connie, I'm not gonna tell him he's wrong. Yeah. Well, that's good. Connie was mouthed it to me, then she gave me the, she debriefed me afterwards, and she was just like that. So how did I end up with this movie, yeah. and you ended up with that last Spider-Man movie? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, oh yeah, on paper, I should have been at the Jurassic Park movie, and you should have been at the Spider-Man movie, but that's the way things break. Deal with the bitch. Yeah, you know, Chad gave me a good, uh, a good way to encourage some critical thinking, and not that mm -hmm. I don't want him to enjoy movies. Like he's at the age when every movie should be the best movie he ever saw. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it's asking him like, oh, really? You really like it? What was it that you liked about it? Mm. You know, and get him to start thinking about the things that appeal yeah. to him, so that as he gets older, he'll be able to, you know, discern the difference between, oh, that was a pile of shit, actually. At yeah. the time, it distracted me. <laughs> yeah, but... it's what I do. With, like it's what I do with my daughter with, with horror movies. Is like when we when the movie finishes, we sit and we talk about it. Um, even if it's just for five minutes, and even if it's just to gauge how she feels about certain things, or did she understand what happened? Like we, when we watched that ghost stories, um, the Martin, Fe Martin Freeman, Freeman or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when we watched that one which she probably wasn't ready for, to be honest. And we watched that one and we got to the end and she was just like, I could see, she, she was like, hmm. I was like, well, let's talk about the ending of this movie. And like, I broke it all down and at the end, I was like that, right. So do you understand? She's like, I understand now. And I was like, what do you think? And she's like, I think I like it more now. So it's that sort of thing where like, she was kind of on the fence. And then as soon as the bit that didn't make sense to her made sense to her, she was on board with it. So... I think that's I think that's important. I think I, I really do. I, without being like, I, I, you, without being like, in the fifth minute, the camera angle rotated seventy five degrees to the left. Do you understand what the director was conveying? Right. You right, know, right. it's not on that level, but it's like sometimes it's worth saying. And you're right. Like, what is it about the movie that you actually did like? And it, sometimes the answers can be interesting. Um, I haven't gotten like, there. Really interesting. The, yeah. the two that we've watched recently, just kind of at home, that I'm really excited about. To Like, it was really fun to share the movies with them. One was one that um, their mom really liked, which was Hocus Pocus. So we watched oh, that. Oh, man, right and we are, we are spitting distance to that second one. Yeah, right. And, so, and that's why we watched it. It was like, hey, the sequel's coming, and your mom and I are going to watch that. So yeah. if you want to watch it with us, here's the first one. And they were... They were into it for the most part. Like they, no, I would say, slightly above lukewarm about Hocus Pocus. All right. Yeah. You know, there were things they liked about it, but certainly things that they were like, "This movie looks old." It's yeah. Like, well, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, but it's yeah, and, <laughs> it's like thirty years old. Yeah. And, Thanks, kids. <laughs> right. And so Tuesday night, though, um, 
it was a real like we need to distract both of you because you're driving your grandparents crazy mm. and so uh the boy was like i want to watch something but i want i want to watch something kind of scary but not too scary maybe a little more than hocus pocus and i was like it. martyrs you see yeah. I, I said let me introduce you to a little movie called monster squad nice and yeah so they both ended up watching that and were you know had those moments of like those special effects look terrible and it's like yeah it was the 80s just calm down yeah and <laughs> that vortex looks like garbage why are we watching yeah. this well, 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 well i just want you to sit down right now and watch this doctor strange movie right watch it like see t t like snapshot this scene and let's revisit it in 25 years yeah. let's see how that holds up motherfucker right. but i'll t I, the thing that really blew me away they were really into it they mm. really like the scary German guy stuff. That really did. Oh, it. yeah. How about another piece of pie? And, right, yeah. <laughs> now yeah. the time has come for you to get the last piece of pie. Yeah. Um, that really got him. And <laughs> and the Frankenstein thing at the end. Yeah. When he goes into the vortex and stuff, they were like, Dad. he's away? How, why is he going away? And I was like, well, he was a monster and he had to go. But she mm -hmm. gave him the the stuffed animal, and they're like, "I can't believe he went away." And it's they don't get that in movies now. Yeah. Bro. They've taken that out of movies yeah. now. So that really hit them. They were like, "Oh my god, I can't believe they, it!" Really took them a, took them aback that mm -hmm. like good Frankenstein, who was everybody's pal and was saving their lives. Like, oh no, mm -hmm. he he goes away with all the other monsters. Um, but it was fun. Like that one really landed. They both really liked. So nice, they were like, man. you know, oh, it was old, but it was really good. And so I'm, we're getting to the point now, and I don't know if I'm ready to pull the trigger on this yet. Probably soon, but it's gonna be like, it's time for pull. Oh, dude, yeah. Oh, my daughter still not seen Poltergeist. That's a good show, actually. It's it's PG, but it's a. I but the, yeah, that's the movie. That yeah, that's the movie that it'll fuck you up. Well, that's the movie that that's the movie that caused the change in the rating. Yeah, that well, it was that in Temple of Doom, right? Like the yeah, Spielberg that's the joints. both of them. Like, like Spielberg just really wanted to break the back of yeah. everything. He's like, "Fuck your system." Um, you know, well, you could change your classifications on me, and like, they were like, "Yes, look at the kids crying in the back." Ah. Like we're changing this classification. So, um, oh my man, you've got like, you know what's a good one? What's that? You want to swing in? You want to swing in with, with the kids? Hannah Norman. Oh, that's a great idea. Harmon Nor like my daughter is fucking borderline obsessed with that movie and has been since she was like fucking four. You know, um, like there's that trifecta of like that Coraline and Monster House. All three of hundred percent. Yeah, all good. three. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, so yeah, th th that's a great idea. We might do one of those this weekend. If I yeah, you the boy's in a little bit of trouble, so we'll we'll see how he's doing. <laughs> he's, he's a little hyperactive. He just can't. Can't keep his ass in a seat. <laughs> He's <laughs> he is he got the hammer dropped on him today. That kid doesn't have any internet at all for a while. Oh man. <laughs> uh, so I get yeah. I, that's, there's part of me, there's part of me that's glad that when I was a kid that I could be punished. The internet didn't exist or mobile phones. Um because oh, the idea of like not being able to surf the net nowadays, like, like if my fo if I'm in an area which doesn't have reception, like I visibly like I'm like Patrick Bateman being shown a fucking business card, uh, you just start oh, sweating and shit. Yeah, they're little junkies, man. It it's mm. it like when when their internet gets cut off, it's disturbing. Yeah, the way that they're just like, what what, what am do I we supposed do? to do? Yeah. Yeah. It's like literally anything else. Like mm. you want to, you want to go get some models or something. You put one of those together, and mm. yeah, we're gonna have a talk this week about like you need to find some other activities because this internet is gone for a while. Yeah, and you yeah, need yeah. To, you need to figure out what it is you're gonna do to keep yourself occupied. Um, but uh, we're we're also starting to build the lawn zombie this week nice. so that'll be fun mm -hmm. uh anyway enough of that but yeah i'm I'm glad we had that talk about the the paranorman 
because that may happen. Dude, like, yeah, I'd like whenever, whenever you're like that, I'm mm, like, I'm trying, like, I've got a list of movies that I went through with my daughter before we like upgraded to like harder horror movies, which she's just watching as if there ain't nothing but a thing now. Yeah. I'm like, I've, I've, I've created them, I have physically created a monster now. Um, <laughs> she was chasing me to watch Wreck too. We watched it together, but she was like, oh wow, I'd been going to watch that second Wreck movie, and I was like, maybe we'll just give it a bit of time between and she was like oh, let's just watch it um and then while watching it she was like she could remember like when they, they go in at the beginning and the like the handcuffs are there but the thing she's like oh, the woman's not handcuffed there anymore from the previous movie she could remember all the yeah. shit so um yeah. yeah we're we're not quite there the 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 girl no, is really there. into reading uh ghost stories Oh, nice. So she's she's on the way as well. And the mm -hmm. kid, the, the boy is, he's a little more timid when it comes to horror movies and stuff. But I think it may be just me being a bad influence. That because I like that stuff, he's like, yeah. Watch a scary Give movie. Give a try. Yeah. How about, how about we watch a scary movie? And that's him, you know? Yeah. I'm like, you want to watch a scary movie? I'm like Dan Aykroyd from the Twilight Zone movie. You want to see something yeah. really scary? <laughs> <laughs> um that's cool man that's it's, cool it's well, fun i'm really getting into it you know it's weird we're gonna go all the way through october talking about pink panther movies and that's what they call a segue oh well so this is the return of the pink panther um the return you see <laughs> the return i say and and we so we talked about this a little bit on the last episode but this is so Blake, Blake Edwards and, and Peter Sellers walked away from the franchise mostly because they couldn't get along with mm. each other. Yeah. And then they did the... Um, Party? The Inspector... Well, the, the Inspector Clouseau. Oh, right. Well, the, yeah, the, so Blake Edwards and Peter Sellers had a movie called The Party and the studio did Inspector Clouseau and they just were like, we don't need you. We have Alan Arkin and nothing can go wrong with this movie. And so, right. And so that was a disaster. And so there was a cooling off period. And then Blake Edwards had a run of pretty disappointing movies. So uh, did Pierre Sellers. Yeah. yeah and, like, and so but Pierre Sellers, like his career wasn't quite in the toilet, but he was not, he was no longer seen as bankable. So uh, Blake Edwards wrote a treatment that was like, hey, um, here, here's the Pink Panther I movie I would make too. Mm -hmm. And Peter Sellers was like, you know what? I could be on, on board for this, but it was still kind of tough for them to get financing for. Yes. And so there was a guy named Lou Grade, who was this like weird Russian dude or, you know, <laughs> from the Ukraine actually, uh, by today's standards, but he was mm -hmm. the guy who did um, ATV productions, which oh, right. did a lot of children's shit, like Thunderbirds and mm -hmm. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions yep. and stuff like that. And so Lou Grade was like, hey, I'll put up the money for this and you guys can go, you know, make your movie. And so Blake Edwards said, look, I'll do it if Sellers agree. And mm -hmm. so Lou Grade went to Peter Sellers and talked him into doing it. And they, and basically United Artists, the, the company that released the movie, just gave the movie to Lou, Lou Grade to produce and said, hey, all we want is a cut of the profits and worldwide distribution rights. And then you can, you know, you can make whatever the hell movie you want. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what happened here. It was, it was really kind of letting Blake Edwards and, and Peter Sellers loose in making you know this modern retelling of of the pink panther and it it starts off with you know you're in lukash um yeah. and <laughs> and it's it's basically like here is the pink panther that has been recovered mm -hmm. we have this incredible security around yeah. it like we've got these doors that fall you know, there's sensors everywhere, alarms, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Sharks with laser beams attached to their freaking heads. Dude, it's it's nuts. And that so they describe that, and that rolls into the credits of, mm -hmm. of the Pink Panther Returns, which is like a whole Pink Panther cartoon. 
Like it's super oh, yeah. elaborate credits. I was really blown away by it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, by this point, the cartoon's been long running, and the music's you know I mean? back. Well. The Henry Mancini yep. music is back too, which was clearly missing <laughs> from yeah, Inspector from Clouseau. Yeah. And just hearing that, yeah. but um, but um, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay, all right. Now this is a movie again. Yeah, <laughs> this is a movie. Um, it's, it's also worth saying from from the stuff you were giving away. This movie, huge success basically resurrects Peter Sellers career and Blake Edwards like the 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 call their shots after this one because it was so successful so yeah who would have, who would have thought it Bo, the winning team behind the movie previously that was successful would be successful again who would think the successful <laughs> people would be successful again no yeah. one um, but yeah, like th this movie has essentially right. So this one's a bit longer. Yeah, it's we're sitting hour almost 50, a, two hours. Yeah, that and the first fifteen minutes is basically the heist. It's the movie Entrapment, only without yeah. sexy Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just got old Sean Connery dancing around a bunch of laser beams. Oh, Duncan. Look at me, I'm twirling like a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, but that's what happens. Goodness. It's a, like a mask guy. He's yeah. slipping under doors and going under lasers and using hairspray to find the trip wires and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And he finally uses uh, a little grabby claw. That like old people use to get cans off of the high shelves yeah. and stuff. And as the, those grabby claws are only designed for for two things: one, getting cans off shelves, and the second thing, stealing precious jewels. Yeah, as literally, there's no other practical use for them at all. Absolutely not. And he still <laughs> almost fucks it up with. He has to pull out a second grabby claw. Yeah. To to make this work, uh, and then leaves behind, like steals the diamond, leaves behind um, a glove. Yeah with a sequent P uh, to indicate the Phantom. And if you'll recall, the Phantom was the the thief in the first Pink Panther movie. So hence Return of the yeah. Pink Panther. It's not just Clouseau returning, but <laughs> yeah. it is. Return of the Pink Panther, but not the return of David Niven. Yeah, so, so before like, we get in to this, him, in, in this movie, the Phantom has bought a house in France where there's a trap door, where if it goes down, <laughs> He goes forward 12 hours, but the age is three days, and he's been through it a few times, because Christopher Plummer is considerably younger looking than David Niven. A hundred percent. Also, <laughs> doesn't sound or look like David Niven in any way, shape, or form. No, no. So, but like, I like the I, fact that they're not even trying I, to pretend. Oh, yeah, like, at this, at this point, yeah, the, the only thing that's going to get confusing is David Niven will resurrect that role later on in the series, so... Like the thing about uh, the thing I love about the Pink Panther is that some things have weird consistency and other things they just don't care about. Yeah. And this is one of those things. We're gonna have like David Never was asked to re reprise the role. He couldn't do it. He was working on something else. So they basically got Christopher Plummer in, a guy who does not even remotely resemble David Niven in look, stature, voice. Um and they're like, Yeah, but Plumber and plumber, it like adds a lot to this. Um, he's really and that, good. He's really good, and he's also his youth allows him to, I don't know, run, yeah, like jump off things, which like is a central. Like David Niven they would not been able to do half the stuff in this movie without a uh, like a really aptly looking younger stunt double. <laughs> he he definitely feels and looks more like the international playboy that. Yes, you know Charles Lytton is is supposed to be in in yeah. the story, um, and it was distracting how many times he asked characters in the movie, um, if they had read Shakespeare in the original Klingon. Takba, <laughs> takbe, <laughs> um, let them die. Yeah. Um, uh, Star Trek Six, secretly the best Star Trek movie. Uh, I don't, wouldn't even dispute that. Uh, that uh, as a as a big Trekkie, um, it is my favorite. So yeah. Yeah, between, I, it's between that and maybe First Contact. I have a soft spot for First Contact. It's good. I I would go either Con or or Six. 
or a discovery. Oh, can can's like I, I can's a different category for me. Did you hear? Like, I don't even put can in the same like can to me. Like if we're just saying of all time, yeah. the best thing that Star Trek has ever done is either the episode of Deep Space Nine where um, they plant the evidence to get the Romulans in in the Dominion War, which is way, maybe one of my favorite things that's ever happened, or the Wrath of Khan. I thought that's like they are like on a different level, and then we can talk about everything else. Yeah, so. can, can I blow your mind real quick about a podcast blow that's about mind. to come out? Oh, Do you know about by this? you by you or something? No, else? no, no, no. That ties into the Wrath of Khan. Oh, yes, please, please tell me. Okay, so there is there they are about to launch a dramatic podcast that takes place on SETI Alpha Five. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah that is the story of what happened prior to Khan being visited by uh Chekhov but it is bringing Nicholas Meyer in to write all of it really yes yeah yeah isn't that awesome Ooh, my nipples just got hard uh, yeah <laughs> yeah the guy who wrote Wrath of Khan is writing a yeah. prequel that is all going to be this audio drama podcast of of could what be happened really 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 good it, it could be very cool and just uh, it depends on who you get playing con because they need to do a little bit of montalban but you can't go overboard yeah, yeah. with it yeah, you, can't, but, you can't go racistly overboard with it. right yeah, you can't do my do. impression of ricardo montalban where it's just admiral kirk <laughs> but but you have to do a little bit of that yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just imagine how many Shakespeare references are going to be in it, and oh uh, yeah, it's going to be so good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's coming. I don't know when when they drop that, but there was Me recently don't. a Star Trek event where they were talking about like all the new shows and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And this was part of that. Was like, oh, Nick Myers coming back to do this this prequel thing to Khan. Like, whoa, what? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was the of all the stuff that that came the news that came out of that it was like, oh yeah, they're doing more. Oh, roads. Like, like when, when like you that. when you talk about horror and you talk about like because obviously we talk a lot about horror, but we talk about a lot about horror and just like <laughs> like villains and and movies in the the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Inevitably, all roads go back to Star Trek. It's an, it's very difficult to get away from it. Uh, we were speaking about. Uh, Freaking Hellraiser earlier on, and like literally my favorite character from the entire run of Deep Space Nine is Garrick, played by fucking Andy, what's his tits? Andy Robbins, for, uh, who plays fucking the dad in oh, Hellraiser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uncle Frank. Well, yeah, he becomes yeah. Uncle Frank. Right, right. Uh, come, so, come to Uncle Frank. Come yeah, to like, he's like, yeah, so he, he, but he plays Garrick. Um, throughout that entire thing, like the the whole season, so like it's weird how you can look at that. I did not know about that, and I I will fucking binge listen to that like a myth addict. Yeah, I'll I'll have to look up myth. when that's dropping because I I can't wait either. I was like, oh well, those are all things I like. <laughs> yeah, like but oh, oh, I, I haven't to go and fuck myself. Oh, fine. Uh, yeah, I mean <laughs> Nicholas Meyer. You know we've talked about him before, but like. Mm. You, if you wrote Wrath of Khan and Time After Time, yeah. then I'm you've got me yeah. for life. Yeah. Um, so anyway, anyway, like so Christopher that, Plummer. <laughs> that, yes, that, that's how this all started. Yeah. Uh, talk, fuck. Um, <laughs> so there, there's a, a meeting where the Shah of Lugash basically says the only person that can get the the Pink Panther diamond for them. Is the guy who found it in the first place, Inspector Closo. Yes. Who is uh currently oh, demoted my. to, to a is, big cop. Like the introduction to Cluso in every movie is just fucking wonderful. Um and this is Sellers returning to it like a decade or just over a decade after the previous one, and is now having fun with the voice. Absolutely. So, like, this yeah. accent is out of control. Yeah, it gets better, right? It gets better. When we get to the next movie, like, there's still some things where he's trying to make it sound like it, like, like but the re there's so many jokes at the expense of him saying words, specifically things like, 
I am an officer of the law. <laughs> And they're like the the loo, and he's like, "Yes, I said the episode the loo." Um, like, and there's so much of this, but we we're introduced to him as essentially a gendarme. He's yeah. a he's a beat. He's a he's a simple beat cop boy. Um, and he's he's walking along the the the, the, the well, let's just say the Champs Elysees. Why not? We're yeah. in Paris, and he's walking there, and he hears a a, a guy playing an accordion. With the minky, a minky, um, <laughs> yeah, is minky. this your so minky? Was, is this is your minky? Um, it's a, a guy <laughs> playing an accordion. So basically, ask him if he has a license, and the guy's like, "Do I have a one?" Is like, "Do you have a license for commercial players? This music, um, and so the guy, right? So there's an interaction between them where the guy basically says, "Listen, I'm, I mean, I'm not making money at this. The monkey makes money at this. Is what do you mean the monkey makes money? He's like, listen, he doesn't tell me what to play, and I don't tell him what to do with his money. He's like, you're you're having me on here, so And meanwhile, this is outside the bank, and a car pulls up, and a bunch of masked men go into the bank and start robbing it while pedantically Cluso is having a conversation." With this guy, and like the he, like the, this goes back and forth, and the guys are robbing the bank and all the rest. And Cluso eventually gets to a point where he he's talking about the lessons again, mm -hmm. and the guy says to him, "He's like, how do you know so much about licenses?" And he's like, "What do you mean, how much?" It's like, uh, "Are you blind?" And the guy's like, "Yeah, I'm blind." And he's like, "Oh right, uh, well I'm a gendarme." And the guy starts feeling up his his like things, like, realizes he's a policeman. He's like, "Listen, I will let you off with a warning." Meanwhile, the guys are coming out the bank into the escape car, which Cluso sees, and he sees one of them drop a bag. He then lifts the bag with the money and hands it to them as they drive away. And then the owner of the bank comes out, pulls out a gun. Cluso hits him in the back of the head. Yeah. Brains knocks it. him out. And then we're instantly in uh, Chief Inspector Dreyfus's office, as played by Herbert Lom who is fucking amazing again. He's mm. so good in this. He's so good. And we're like, we're straight, you idiot. Um, we're right in there. And we we start getting some details. We start getting some of the funniest details here. The first one is, like, close was like that. I was doing my, my duty. I was busy. And he's like, oh, but well, did you arrest the guy with the accordion? And he was like, no, he, he managed to escape. And he's like, you're aware that that man was the lookout? <laughs> How could he be the lookout? He was blind. <laughs> he's like, uh, how did you know he was blind? He said, he told me. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> it's like right. fucking absolute moron. Um, so Dreyfus like, gets all animated about this and like once again uh, fires Clouseau. Basically suspends him suspends for, six him for six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No pee. Right. And no so pee. Clouseau goes off you know and there's another threat of like you know uh you'll be like reading parking meters and martinique and i don't know why martinique sounds like such a bad deal because everything i know about martinique sounds really nice yeah it probably is just really quiet i'm no, assuming no. it's just really quiet so but, so um, he goes home well, well, as he's walking out the door francois walks in the door yeah yeah and Franz, he's like, like, so like, like, Lom's doing the, the, the twitchy eye and the shaky yeah. thing. And he, he gets a cigarette out. This is fucking genius, right? He gets this because we, we, we had, we had the, what was it? We had the cigar um, yeah. guillotine in the previous Very movie. Cut off but, so, his, yeah. yeah. So he's like, he gets a cigarette, puts in it, and he takes a gun out of his drawer. And Franz was like, no, no, look at this. And he's like, this, listen, it was a gift from my wife and it's a lighter. So, like, as soon as you see this happen, you're like that. I know where the joke's going. I can't fucking wait. I know where the joke is going. So he lights his cigarette and he's like, ah, oh, he's like, Cluso, he's driving me crazy. What is it? And he's like, well, I've just had the commissioner on the phone. He's like, what's the commissioner wanting? Well, commissioner wants Cluso reinstated. And he's like, what? <laughs> what? And then the eye starts doing the, the, the twitchy thing again. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, then the, this government in Lensk or wherever it is, um, they want, they want Cluso there on the case and he's like that idiot that nincompop and his eyes still doing the, the twitchy thing um he's like no that is a well the commissioner like we'll get the commissioner on the phone meanwhile he, he's he fucking puts his cigarette out speaks to the commissioner we don't hear the other side of the conversation except the commissioner demands that Cluso is put back on the case and he's like oh do you know he's a, like all right fine whatever puts down the phone he's like i'm gonna have to get Cluso back in the case 
Francois like right, he's like go like phone him, phone him, like get him back him in the case. So Francois goes out, sits down. Meanwhile, Dreyfus puts another cigarette in his mouth. We see outside the room, and then we hear the gun go. Mm-hmm. And it's like a cartoon boom when we open it, the cigarettes all like frazzled, these faces all black, and the gun's the same. And so we know the joke. We know the guy. And he's like holding his nose. Yeah. Because it's went up there, and like, we're going to come back to this again, yeah. which is kind of hilarious about it. Because as soon as you know that's the you, some movies would one and done this gag. The fact to come back to it, and it's funnier the second time round. Yeah, it, it, like, there's three, again, aren't there? Aren't there three times three that the gag total, comes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, three, three times. One of them where like it's consistently, easily, desperately. Yeah, three, three times. Yeah, he shoots off his nose the second time and shoots Francois the third time. Um, so like, it's like, but yeah, we jump back to the house over to right. you, and uh, all right, you know what's going to happen, right? If he is as soon as he gets home, he assumes Kato is going to attack, yeah, Kato, <laughs> yeah, and he's got to look it around, and he doesn't see him anywhere, and uh, <laughs> it like he creeps around into the sitting room and goes into the hallway and all, all this yeah. hot on the heels of Kato can't find him anywhere. And then he opens the refrigerator <laughs> and out jumps ah! Kato. Ah! <laughs> and so there's another fight. He's all white with frost. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a, a battle between Kato and, and uh, Clouseau that involves yeah. him doing this like crazy high kick. Love this Clouseau. is the first movie that we use the slow mo camera. This is going to be used in almost every movie after this with fights with Kato. They get funnier as it goes on. So he does this. He like basically they're like kind of scrambling and it's a real. They're really getting physical, and he decides to run at him and do like a jumping kick, and it's oh in slow motion, and he jumps like well above Kato's head. Kato doesn't even duck. And he goes through into the like pantry in the back, like hits the table, and it's all still done in slow motion. And we keep cutting between his neighbor who's watching TV and then back to him as the shelves come down and all the cereal spills off in slow motion, just an absolute clusterfuck, right? And then the phone goes, and of course, this is we're used to we know what's coming here, Bo. Yeah, but I love it. He says, uh, um. Because he's not, and the police, it's these subtle attentions to detail. I love uh, Kato answers and says, um, Mr. Clouseau's residence, where he was used to say, Inspector Clouseau's residence, one moment, please. He's, he's like, uh, he's like, uh, Mr. Clouseau's residence, he's like, it's for you, it's Chief Inspector Dreyfus. And so, <laughs> to get up, only really fucking brush himself off, and uh, and all, all the rest. He goes back, he's back on the case, Bo. Happy right. times. And we're expecting the, you know, the fuckery that we've seen in all the other movies, which we do get. He's like, ah, get on the, the odd fridge. Yeah, it was good. You caught me unawares. And that was, yeah, it was very good, you know. Uh, and they, they, they kind of do another, like, as if they're going to do a circle thing. And he literally kicks him in the balls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tells him he's, he's flies open, which will once again come into the movie later. And he's like, hey, Your zip is open, your fly. And he looks at him, and that kicks him in the nuts. And then we jump. This is the bit with the bomb, isn't it? Um, no, well, no, because then we go to the National Museum. This is right. Where, yeah. where he goes to examine. I will say the the one one of the things that's kind of dated about this movie and is a little uncomfortable is the, the yellow of, friend. Yeah, the number of times that Clouseau yeah. refers to him. No, as, this is the, the bomb does happen, right? So listen, so this is what happens, right? So the bomb happens here because he uses it twice. We don't get it afterwards, but he does use it twice here, back to back, and yes, it's like very uncomfortable. Yeah. So the, like he's getting all cleaned off to go um to go on assignment. And he's like, yeah, you know, sometimes I think of myself very much like the chief inspector. We are the same. We have keen mind. We have a keen mind. Oh, that's right. That's like, right. He's like, you would not understand this, my little yellow friend. Um, and you're like, oh, no. And then the door goes and he goes to the door and a guy who looks like a jello killer, right, with a trench coat and a hat 
hands him a cartoon bomb. It's yeah. one of those big black balls with the and he walks into he walks into the room and he's talking about how keen his intellect is while shaking this bomb in front. He's like, ah, and he throws it, explodes. We then cut to him in Dreyfus's office, and he's all blackened and all the rest. And he's like, he's he uses the line. It's once again, it's and it hasn't aged well. But he basically says, Keto is in hospital now. It almost blew the yellow skin right off him. And you're like, oh no. But this is where Dreyfus goes like visibly crazy. Right. <laughs> right. Talk, right. He's like that. Well, he's, he's like, got a big bandage over his face because he blew part of his nose off. <laughs> right. He blew part of it. But uh, Cluso is basically talking, and Dreyfus is just like, you need to get out of this. You need to leave me alone. And he won't do it. So then he reaches it, like physically snaps, reaches it to his drawer, pulls out a gun, goes to shoot him. It's the lighter, which Cluso then gets a cigarette to light against him. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Eye. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, his eyes doing the whole twitchy, twitchy, twitch thing like that. And so he puts that down and then gets the, he gets the other gun and then lifts it up, then tries to shoot him, but the gun's got no bullets. But Cluso thinks it's the lighter and he's like, ah, I think your lighter has uh, run out of the fluid. And he's like, what? <laughs> fucking just shoot, shoot. Just like, get out, get out my office, get out, get out. And then they keep having the conversation. He puts the gun down on the table though. And I can't remember what it is that triggers him off. But there's a bit where he just lifts the gun again and just keeps trying. Yeah. Just oh keeps no, trying. it is your flint. You need a new flint. <laughs> well, you need to get out of this office now. I'm going to kill you if you don't get out of this office <laughs> right. right now. So Cluso does go out the office and yeah. he's on the case now. Yeah, and, and goes but this to... is where the the gun goes off the second time. Right, right, right. And the second time blows his nose. Off essentially, yeah. like, uh, like, like, like Francois gets called and he's behind the desk and he's like, uh, well, you need to find an ambulance. Yeah. That's right, because his nose is gone. Now we cut to their back characters, we'll see them every now and again, but now we're brand new characters. Yeah, so, uh, it there's a whole scene where he's inspecting the crime scene mm -hmm. at the museum where he is constantly knocking over antiquities uh in in typical cluso fashion the best gag of the whole bit is um him like walking towards him of like i notice everything and then yeah. immediately falls like goes you know ass over tea kettle on the and, wax on on the wax that the and they're, they're tell they're telling them how the the burglar did all these things and they're explaining it and he is like like basically shushing them, yeah. And um, just as you say, I notice everything, and just as all that, well, he used wax, and he's like, "What wax?" Foom, like that right on the ground, and he's like, "Have you had this wax?" Suddenly, so they're like, "Well, it's wax," and it's like, "Ah, I think if you send this to the lab, you will find out it is English wax." And they're right. like, "But what does that prove?" And he's like, "It proves that I know that the Phantom was an English man." And they're like, how do, how do you know that? And he's like, because I know... He, he keeps calling him Charles the Phantom. Because mm -hmm. uh, he's the, the, the Charles the Phantom de Litton. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Um, so he knows because of the first Pink Panther movie, it was revealed to him who, who, the, uh, who the, the Phantom was. Yeah. Um, we get a good gag. Well, you're right. It's, it really is. It's a set up of lots of really small jokes. Like one of them when they're walking into the museum... He the camera shows the corridor and as they're walking up the corridor to turn in, he walks past <laughs> right. and he has to like walk up. Just showing he's a complete clown. The shutting door thing, like uh -huh. the like that, and then the 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 kind of payoff to this is that there is a grappling hook that is used, and Cluso for some reason decides he's going to pull this wire, which dislodges this giant shield from the wall which then smashes through uh, some antiques, knocks over a statue, um, and he's kind of like, uh, and they're like, uh, um, and that's kind of the end of the, the guy, but Cluso's yeah. on the case. Right, and, and this movie is basically just a string of those kinds of scenes. Yeah, like, like, everything here is, yeah, it's comedic setup. It's all sh short skits. The, the plot together. is the Charles Lytton stuff. Yes, and, so and in a lot of respects, it's back to the first Pink yeah. Panther movie. So, like you were saying, like 
basically, if Blake Edwards, who after making that first Pink Panther movie, was like, "We need more Cluso," yeah, right. Then that's why I did the whole Cluso movie. If he was coming back to do a Pink Panther movie, writing it the way he wanted to write it, this does feel like the organic 50-50 split between the action set pieces of the International Man of Mystery and the Cluso stuff. It's yeah. almost 50-50 right down the middle. Yeah, very much so. And and the next scene is is Charles Linton in England with yes. his his lady friend, played by Catherine Schell, yeah. um, who is... You know, basically, they they read the article in the paper that says the Pink Panther diamond ha has been stolen, and she's like, "Is there something you're not telling me?" And he's like, "You know, because <laughs> he's fine. retired, right? He's he's retired. He's a retired uh, thief, so he's right?" Now... And ever since he met her, he's been clean. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Hey, yeah. I met you, and I decided I was going to leave that life behind me. This was not me, but you know, they left this glove behind to frame me." Mm -hmm. And and basically, as they're kind of talking and flirting and hanging out by this pool, reading the paper, um, she kind of talks him into, hey, the only way you're going to be able to clear your name is yeah. if you find the actual thief. And he's like, well, I guess it's time to go find this imposter then. And so, yeah, so like, he's back. He's back doing so. He's back being a a, a traveler. I, the thing is, like the setup. Well, the first time we see him, he's painting. We don't see what he's painting. When we actually see it, it's just things like dull, 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 dull. He's just painted the same word because he's he, he's he, he's settled down, but he's not happy. Yeah. So she basically is sending him off to be happy, which will play a vital part in this. Um, you can figure it out pretty quick, but um, so yeah, so so channels is now. On the move, but meanwhile, Caluso is focusing in on Sir Charles, and we are going to get the beginning of a series of absolutely amazing costumes. Um, the first is the her... pool guy. Yep, <laughs> where he gets he gets a, a truck that's like a pool maintenance deal, and he's going to go stake out Litton's place, but he sees him like drive by mm -hmm. on the on the way and. Clouseau ends up getting distracted. And also, I think his brakes are cut yeah. as well. And we'll get, you know, surprise, surprise, <laughs> Dreyfus is still trying to murder him. Yeah, there's there's a, there's an assassin trying to kill yeah. him. <laughs> uh, an assassin, in quotes. And so he... <laughs> the, the irony being that Clouseau drives the pool truck into a pool. Yes. And, you know... It's the old pool gag. Yeah. It works in a like because the next scene we see him, he's standing soaking wet. Uh like his his beard's half hanging on. Uh there's a good beard bit later or a mustache uh, bit, but um yeah. and we see that like you know, yes, the brakes were cut. Also, there's another attempt on his life when a shooter tries to shoot him. Oh, and he sneezes. And he sneezes <laughs> and bends down and and uh, the fruit that like the fruit behind them like explodes, yeah. and the guy goes. The guy looks and goes, "Gesundheit." Right. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> so the next costume slash <laughs> undercover attempt is oh, my dude. favorite. The phone one, the telephone guy. Oh, this is like, it starts with the doorbell. The, the doorbell gag is fucking amazing because he hits it and it just won't stop ringing. And so he's like banging on it and then he starts yanking it and he yanks the whole cord out. A comically large cord. It's it, like, it's a, as if a magician were pulling the cord out of his sleeve. And when the, you know, the butler shows up or whatever, he's like, yeah, I fixed your doorbell. Yeah, um, he eventually hits it with a hammer while it's at, like, he's pulled all the wires out and then just like wraps it up and hands it to and he's like, who are you? And he's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm the phone guy. He's like, why are you here? There's a problem with your phone. Yeah. So, and he's... <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, so, he goes to uh, work oh, so on Char the phone. So, Charles's wife clocks him. Yeah. And she knows who he is. Immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, like, she's hiding behind the door, giggling, and they decide that they're going to set Clouseau up on this elaborate prank of trying to capture Sir Charles. Right. And, 
like they, she invents like this meeting that she's gonna have and you know this far oh, away this like, with the phone thing like, yeah. yeah so he goes he goes into the house it goes into a room to test the phones which happens to be the study or the office and while he's in there everything fucking goes wrong he ends up falling he ends up knocking loads of shit over ends up falling he has for some reason inexplicably a tube of super glue in his back pocket which he pulls out then sits on a chair which he then sticks to the chair mm-hmm. um and he overhears this conversation between the butler and the wife which is staged to basically say he's going to, they're going to be at a hotel somewhere else so then when the butler goes up to chat the door, Cluso's stuck to this fucking chair and he's like, one moment, please. He's like, hey, I am doing very sophisticated telephone work, which cannot be interrupted. And he's trying to get up. So he has to take his trousers off, then rip them. Then he puts them on backwards. <laughs> so there's a bit of fabric stuck to the front. And he's like he's trying to fix the tables falling over. It's all, it's all a mess. But basically, he manages to open the door and say, I've fixed your phone now. <laughs> right. After dropping the receiver out of the phone and, yeah. Everything's a fucking shambles. And um, he's now got, he's got his next destination, which is this hotel, which also, like, Peter Sellers' timing, comic timing, is ridiculous. And there's a scene beside his swimming pool with a diver, which... Like details that perfectly. See the fall backwards in time with the diver is fucking amazing. It's was, really good. I was howling. I forgotten this was in this. Um, but yeah, so that's he's now going to go to this hotel and oh, and but track we're, him track. we're saying that when he leaves as the telephone repairman, yes, the brakes also are are cut in this one, and yes, he ends up driving again. that truck into the same pool as yeah. the pool uh, the pool because we can do a gag more than once yeah. and it's funny more than once and that's why i love it right and then uh francois comes in to let him know that uh <laughs> that let dreyfus know that Clouseau has now destroyed two trucks a pool yeah um and dreyfus gets so pissed off he's like i need to a cigarette yeah and francois is like oh yeah and yeah. Uh, you know what it's a right. lighter. <laughs> because yeah and he's like this is just a lighter don't even sweat it and he goes to light his cigarette but and ends up shooting francois <laughs> yeah ends up shooting francois which we then find out afterwards puts him on administrative leave um yes. which we don't know about we'll see him like interact with a psychiatrist but he will still interact with Cluso, but it's not in any official capacity <laughs> right, right? From this point onwards, we don't know that. We'll find out later on. But yeah, he, uh, he fucking shits for us. <laughs> and so, after all this business at Lytton Manor, Clouseau mm-hmm. then goes um, to G- Gestad Stad in yep. Switzerland. Yeah, to to go after uh, Charles Lytton, and um. It's like that's a pretty short layover. Yes. Uh, because it's just him again, you know, kind of bungling his way through the hotel. Yeah, like it's like a lot of just Cluso being Cluso, and ultimately he ends up poolside. Um, and that's where you get the Well, he's and, staring at the women walking past in bikinis, and he's like the more the, the more that are walking past, the more he's ogling them. Yeah. And then he's sitting on the edge of the pool, and then a diver comes up to dive and he ends up looking up at her. And of course, she's getting herself ready to go and he's swaying. And as she dives, he falls back and perfect. How it's, many it's a great guy. How many times must they film this? That's not something you pull off the first time. And you think about it, if you don't nail this the first time, you have to dry yourself uh-huh. off. In between, it is just as perfectly the falls done. It's just like it's brilliant. It's brilliant. So once again, Clouseau ends up in a pool. Um, All right, so and... let's catch up with Lytton real quick because there's actual yes. story happening. But mm-hmm. we'll we'll jump through this pretty quick because it's not very funny. So Lytton shows up in Lugash. This skeezy guy mm-hmm. um, shows up and is like, you know, hey. Uh, is going to kill him, but he kind kind of ends up getting the dipsy doodle on him. And we learn that this skeezy guy was sent by a guy known as the fat man. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and basically Linton says, so the idea is you're going to, well, 
like you're gonna kill me say yeah. that i stole the the pink panther diamond and then mm -hmm. whoever really has it you're you're free to you know claim that yeah and and also you can get rid of the rest of your political enemies in this hunt yes and um so he ends up like losing this guy going to his hotel in lugash where a guy is waiting in his room a, a guy named colonel sharky yeah so this guy is basically the head of their intelligence agency yeah in that country he's a, like the top brass and and sharky basically says like hey your read on the fat man who is this political appointee in lugash is correct mm -hmm. and and basically re-emphasizing like yes you need to find this diamond and when you but do he wants let me know yeah, he wants them to find it slower, though, because yeah. the longer this is away, the more politically advantageous it is for him. Yes. And so, the so plot thickens. So then we get back to the funny, and it starts with Dreyfus talking to his therapist. Dude, that Which scene is... is fucking amazing. Like, Herbert Long, by the way, he gets only better. Like, yeah. the movies after this, he only gets better. And but he, he's... He's complaining <laughs> about him, he goes... This, he has the brain of a minky. Yeah, and the, the, the therapist goes, a minky? And he's like, I'm even talking like him now. He's an income poop. And he's like, well, you could... Uh, what? He's like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I want to kill him, doctor. I want to kill him. And he's like, well, he's like, well, why don't you kill him? And he's like, what do you mean you're my therapist? He's like, I mean, kill him mentally? And he's like, I can't kill him mentally. He has the, like, he has the brain of a minky. That's right, yeah. the brain of a minky. And he's like, well, you know, he's like, you know, you don't understand, doctor, if he's here. And he's like, well, what would you do if he was here? If he was here, I'd put my hands around his throat and you hear, like, the doctor go, uh, and then he's like that, and I would squeeze him and squeeze him. And the guy's like... Uh, and like right. It's a, like a tight shot, so you only see Dreyfus, but you and can see... the eyes see, going. Yeah. Like, the nose is all taped up. The eyes fucking going. His hands are like, like, like I would just squeeze the life out of every breath, and I would be so happy. And he keeps going, and, he, and then he eventually goes... Oh, you hear what he's like, let's go now. Here's the head thump. Mm -hmm. It's like, doctor, doctor. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, he hasn't killed this therapist. This therapist comes back in, in the next movie. Um, but yeah, like, he's completely unhinged. He's like, he's off the fucking grid. And so, there's a bit where uh, Sir Charles is, ultimately pretends that he is going to cooperate mm -hmm. um, with, with Colonel Sharkey. And yes. so they they show him some security footage as he's trying to kind of hunt down who who it is that actually robbed uh, the museum and took the Pink Panther. And when he sees uh, what seems to be a young mustachioed man on the security camera, even though Sharky is like, "Did you see some someone you knew?" And he's like, "No, no, I didn't yeah. see anyone." Do talk, you talk. see? <laughs> Do you see? Right. As I see the awesome beauty of the red dragon. Uh, uh <laughs> man, I may watch Manhunter tonight. Anyway, of course you. Have. Well, you have to anyway. <laughs> uh, right, I, I'm <laughs> almost through. I'm almost done. Um, so back in Stad, Clouseau is still following Lady Lady Claudine around, Catherine Schell's mm -hmm. character, and. Uh, one of the bellboys that he is kind of deputized into his search. He's yeah, he's getting he's getting tailored for a suit, and the bellboy pops his head in to say that she is going skiing uh, on a glacier. Yeah, on a glacier, and he's like, "All right, he's like, that. he's like, um, he's like, how long have you been a bellboy for?" He's like, "Oh, it's like probably too long." And he's like, "If you keep up doing this great work, then I will see that you are promoted to bellman." Yeah. <laughs> So she stops off though, like after this exchange, <laughs> Catherine Shell stops at the desk and is like, you know, I've decided I'm gonna go to tennis instead. Yeah. But Clouseau doesn't know this, so he poses now as a cleaner, cleaner. like a housekeeper. That's his fuck a uh, cleaner that looks like fucking like Picasso though. Yes. Uh it's very strange. Very, very, very like, like kind of weird mustache and like weird overalls and kind of weird hair and a horrible fake nose, like an absolute hideous fake nose. Uh but he has a vacuum cleaner which can only be described as like 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 an iron lung. Um it it is the most powerful vacuum cleaner known to man. 
it is sucking paintings right out of their frames. Yeah. As soon well, as this you... is the thing, since he switches it on, it just starts like taking everything up, including yeah. the fucking budgie. Yeah. And it, at one point, you see that there is a bird in the cage. You're like, okay, I see where this is headed. Yeah. And, yes, because we've done this gag before as yeah. well. We've done we've done this gag before, but the bird can talk. So when he walks in, he's like, "Go ten tag," and like he's when he was in the door. Hello, go ten tag, and the bird's like, "Go ten tag," um, and you see it. But yeah, he eventually sucks the bird up into the lot, His mustache gets sucked in. Some the, of the, the lingerie the, in the drawer. A shoe. The reveal, yeah, the reveal of the bird with the mustache. <laughs> Is so much funnier than it should be. It's this is tw- it's this is twenty twenty two. It's twenty twenty two. We should not have laughed as hard as we did for this app. Yeah, it's but, fucking ridiculous. Like he, yeah, he finally turns the thing off, opens up the canister. Out comes the bird wearing this fake mustache. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a running gag, which is very funny. There's also a running gag <laughs> with um a lamp. That constantly is like shooting keep a spit, light bulb. It keeps spitting the light bulb out. I mean, <laughs> not it's explained. nonsense. It's not explained either. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It wouldn't have happened. But Cluso gets an electric shock while he's trying to fix it, yeah. which then makes his hair, he makes his moustache go up even further and his hair go all frizzy. Yeah. Um, now now so, he looks less like uh, Picasso and more like uh, uh, like Gauguin. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and but so the bellboy shows up and is like, "Hey, Lady Lady Claudine is coming back to the room." And mm-hmm. so both the bellboy and Clouseau end up hiding in this room as she's like turning on the sauna, which is where they're hiding. Yeah, so they're and, stuck in a sauna, <laughs> right? And he t- he can't not watch her undress, so he gets stuck for a second. <laughs> He just does like, enough for his eye to come out. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if you see it in the mirror, it's one of the most terrifying images ever because it's Pierre Sellers with the frizzy hair and the weird moustache with just the one eye hole. Yeah. It's a real peeping Tom scenario. And so <laughs> at the last second before she opens the sauna door, somebody bangs on the door and she, yeah. she goes there. They get out of the sauna, but of course, because of all the condensation, they're just slipping around. Yeah. Um, a woman named Holga starts massaging Lady Claudine. Yeah. And she's the... built like the end of a brick shit house. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, she stops them as they're trying to sneak out. Yeah, they try to sneak out, and that's when the bulb jumps off and smashes. Yeah. And he's like, oh, and he goes and grabs a Hoover, and she tries to, tries to tell him to go. He switches the Hoover on, and then the Hoover attaches to her tit. <laughs> right. And so he has to reverse it, yeah, to release her boob, which starts spitting all kinds of shit out in the room. And while during that chaos, he and the bellboy just take off. Yeah, got to poop. Yeah, and so um, back to some actual story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Litton ends up kind of skirting another attempt on his life by the fat man and this skeezy guy whose name is Pippi. Yeah, played by Graham Stark. Now, Graham Stark has already been in this series playing a different character. And in the next movie, I think, might play the guy who supplies... It's either the next movie or the movie after. He plays the guy who gives Clouseau his his costumes. Hmm. Whose surname is, is comically Balls. And they have a little ride where it's like that, you know, through rain or, like, rain or shade and sleet or snow. Um, when your back is against the wall, don't worry, you got balls. Like this. <laughs> uh, but Graham Stark will come back and play that role. So he's he's another, like, weird oddity that will be in and out this franchise, just playing different characters. But he plays Pepe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Pepe has some broken fingers. Yeah. So they're... Like, Lytton is trying to get out of Lugash ahead of all this political intrigue. Yeah. Convinced that the thief is no longer there. Yeah. And because he, he knows who not, it is. No, yeah, yeah, he knows and the audience knows by yeah. this point. And so Sharky, Colonel Sharky, is following him because he believes that 
Sir Charles is, knows where the diamond is, so he's yeah, going to follow yeah. him. And then we get this is maybe my favorite of the Clouseau costumes, which is his Playboy at the bar costume. Well, this is what he was getting fitted for in the tailor suit. Yeah. It's this red suit with a like a handlebar mustache, which will very quickly after it gets punched in the face by a go-go dancer, will be a handlebar mustache which only has one handle. Yeah. And he he starts off by sending Lady Claudine a drink. Mm -hmm. And then after a minute, he kind of goes over and is like, can I buy you a drink? She's like, <laughs> uh, you already did. Oh, yes. I see that you got it. How about I join you for a drink? Mm -hmm. And uh, there is this whole bit with him trying to flirt. But like you said, his mustache is... It comes it's messing off. Messing aside. Yeah. yeah, it's messing aside. So he's only got one side. So it looks ridiculous. And she, not only does she know who he is, mm -hmm. she understands that he is zero threat. Yes. And so she's just kind of being somewhat playful with him. And uh, she ends up inviting him back to her room. Yes. And it's there that he gets a call from Dreyfus and Dreyfus is like, who are you with? And he's like, I'm with the Lady Claudine and I'm hot on the trail of the phantom. Yeah. And he's like, you have to arrest her right now. Arrest her in the hotel room. And he's like, which once again, for, if that? you're, yeah, if you are, if you're thinking that Dr Dreyfus is still in charge of the police, you're like, all right, well, she must be the right. phantom. Right. Um, but while, and, and and so he's like, right away, I will do it. And so he hangs up, takes another drink that Lady Claudine has given him, which she slipped him a Mickey. Yeah. So he just kind of slowly slumps forward and freezes. <laughs> like he just kind of, it's like he just winds down. Yeah. And while he's saying like, I will go to Lourdes. And, oh, no. Right. And he's done for. <laughs> And so Charles Litton, meanwhile, shows back up because uh, he, he's got a private flight that he has taken mm -hmm. um, out of Lugash and shows up to d confront his wife, who has left the room. Clouseau wakes back up and is like, wait a second, where did she go? I need to find out who made this order. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> so he calls back to kind of clarify whether or not he's supposed to arrest Lady Claudine. Yeah. And under, kind of for what is the question is like, what am I arresting her for? She is clearly innocent because she is so beautiful. Um, But when he calls back, he's told that, oh, Dreyfus is on leave. Yeah, he's on leave. He's not working. So, which, you know, at that point that you completely know that he's trying to kill him. So he's right. the assassin. Yes. So, uh, Clouseau is, opens the closet to get his suit, at which point Cato attacks. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Which is pretty good. Like, it was a real surprise in the movie. And so, uh, while- But it's he, not a full-on attack, so the arm grabs him and he's like, not now, Cato! And he's yeah. like, so Cato's like, all right, and he comes around and he's like, I told you, not now. Uh, you do it now! And then he fucking hits him again right. in the throat. Sucker punches so. Kato again. Mm -hmm. He calls down for his official Clouseau brown suit. While we see that in an opposite building, uh, Dreyfus is there and is assembling mm -hmm. a gun with which he is going to murder <laughs> Clouseau. And this is like, we're at the, the ass end of all of this. So, yeah. Uh, this all takes place basically in his room from here on out where um, Claudine and uh, Charles Litton are in their room. Yeah. And she admits like, he's like, I know you did it. And she's like, Oh, well, I just want a little spark in our lives. Things were getting kind of dull and you needed the chase. And so I, I stole yeah. this diamond to just reignite the spark of our relationship. And so Colonel Sharkey shows up um, and he's going to murder them both. And it's really, it reminded me a little bit of like the Thin Man movies. 
some. Yeah. Where they're being kind of flirty with each other. And then Sharky busts in with his gun and is like, I'm here to kill you. And then he's like, oh, that's inconvenient. You know, it's a yeah. real, <laughs> real playful kind of dialogue and stuff. But he's going to murder them both, take the diamond, bada bing, bada boom. And then mm-hmm. Clouseau comes in. And he's like, aha, I found you. You are the phantom. And like misses Sharky entirely. And and yeah. it's Charles Lutton that's like, well, he's, there's a man over there killing all three of us. Like, what do you mean all three of us? Oh, me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so Clouseau decides to deploy the good old fashioned, you flies them. Uh, and the guy's like, uh, but no, your flies then. He's like, ah, you know the old flies then. And he goes to look at his fly. And when he looks down, Dreyfus takes his shot and kills Sharky. Yeah. Um, like, so, again, another person died. And Dreyfus this time is not stopping. No, 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 no. It's He's had enough. <laughs> yeah, so Sharky is now dead, but he is still shooting up the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, so everyone takes cover. And basically, he just uh, Dreyfus just loses his shit entirely. Yeah. Like, just goes like, full-on crazy, giggling madman. Yes, and... he he's actually going to physically kill Clouseau with his own hands, but... Right, but, you know, police show up and drag him off, essentially. And so, that's kind of the end of the movie. There's, a bit, like, we go what they to... did, Yeah, so basically, instead of doing, like, a... Like, like a quick... What they do is they jump to the uh, museum. Yeah, And where... the tour guide fills in what happened. So, Chief Inspector Dreyfus um, was committed to a psychiatric ward for help. Clouseau was promoted to his role, so he's now Chief Inspector Clouseau, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, and no one could ever pin the crimes on Sir Charles as the Phantom, so he kind of lived on happily ever after... But the implication being that he is now thieving again. Back. Yeah, Yeah, he's back. So gloves have started to appear and he's back. And then we get a little diddly do, And then Clouseau is out having dinner with Francois, of all people, Mm -hmm. his subordinate now, uh, at a Japanese restaurant. And he gets gets a fortune cookie, which he opens. And it basically says, look out for the... The, the Japanese waitress who who gives you who brings you fortune cookies, yeah, of whatever. And he's like the Japanese waitress that brings me. He turns around and it's Kato in disguise. Yes, and it is. <laughs> it's kind of like those Family Guy Peter versus the Chicken fights. Oh yeah, where it's, it's just absolute mayhem. It goes on for longer than it probably should. Yeah, and there's yeah. another and, of those like slow motion uh, high kicks. Like he jumps, he jumps well above <laughs> and goes right into the kitchen yeah. and lands in the kitchen. Um what I love about this as well is like like it's it's no longer confined to a home. This is in a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking, so you're he, sitting eating your he, food and then all of a sudden these two guys just start fucking brawling. He followed him all the way to Stad. To hide in his closet to attack him there. I mean, As he takes his job seriously. Yeah, though. I mean, um, but that appears like he is manservant to, yeah, to Inspector Clouseau, and also you know the guy that he, he apparently pays to keep him on his toes. But um, well, we jump the very final scene. Yes. of the episode is uh, Dreyfus in a padded cell, like basically in the straight jacket, writing with his feet. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I crayon the words kill Clouseau, kill Clouseau, kill Clouseau all over his padded yeah. cell. Yeah, and the Pink Panther slips in, the animated Pink Panther slips mm-hmm. into his cell. And it, like Herbert Lum acknowledges his. his oh, presence yeah, he t- there. totally acknowledges that you can see it. Yeah. yeah. And, it's kind of cool. Yeah, and, you know, he ends up writing the end on the wall with his foot, and they're, they're in at the movie. Um, and it, it's it's a fun time. Like the Return yeah. of the Pink Panther is a real romp. It's it's a little long. It's that's the issue with this one particularly is that we've already had the movie with the loads of Sir Charles stuff, and we've had the movie with the Clouseau, you know, where Clouseau's the star, and Clouseau's still the star. And at this stage, when we're coming back, I'm like I just want a Clouseau movie. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. 
And sure. I think we have too much Sir Charles in this one, if I'm honest. There's too many scenes of him like escaping just in the nick of time or fighting off like terrorists or like secret service agents or whatever. There's just too much of that. You'd easily trim 20 minutes out of that and it would not affect the comedy or flow of this movie at all. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's kind of fun because that's the stuff that gives the movie its structure because otherwise mm -hmm. it is just completely set piece gags strung together mm -hmm. um and i i do think christopher Plummer is kind of fun in this it's always fun to see a young christopher Plummer doing his thing and he's really good in it and Catherine yeah. shell is fun as you know like i said i like their relationship it's kind of fun and flirty and you know reminds me of of that kind of 40s era caper sort of movie yeah um so that you know all of that stuff is is, is good um but yeah, it's like this is it's nice to see the evolution of Clouseau getting the accent getting crazier, him getting yeah. in, even dumber. Um, the one thing I always wrestle with in, in these movies is there are flashes of competence. Yeah. And I it, it, there are times where I'm like, OK, is this the the smarter Clouseau? I don't want to say smart. Yes. But relatively speaking, the smarter Clouseau, is that who we're dealing with in this scene? Or is it the complete bumbling oaf that is falling backwards into pools and yanking doorbells out? Well, uh, we, the, the, the next movie, so uh, like this was, we mentioned before, massive success. So much right. so that they basically greenlit the next one straight away. And it comes out the following year. Um, and that is The Pink Panther Strikes Again. Fuck all to do with Sir Charles and the Phantom. This one is the most out there. Oh, okay. Right. That's exciting. Right. This is the most out there. This, for me, pound for pound, is one of the funniest ones that we're going to watch. It is absolutely fucking ludicrous. And it starts with Dreyfus being released rightly or wrongly from the insane asylum um, I'll give you the synopsis and nothing more but after escaping from the insane asylum the bonkers Charles Dreyfus sends 26 assassins on the trail of the for forever bumbling Inspector Clouseau oh that's a fun idea I and like get that. so much this is Bond villain territory Dreyfus like builds it like he is he is Dr. Evil in this it is fucking I mean, we okay, are going to howl with laughter. We're going to, like, it's so funny. And it's all Clouseau. The, right. the whole movie's Clouseau. So, and it's some of the best Peter Sellers. You're, like, the costumes, the set pieces, it is so over the top. So much so that the movie they did after this, they had to rein it back in because there was nowhere else to go. Um, so, yeah, I can't, I physically cannot wait. You are, the fact you've never seen this, just makes Absolutely me so not. excited. I'm yeah. so fucking giddy for this one. So that'll be our next one that we do. Great. I, I'm very excited. And it's kind of nice to do this because, you know, as much as I love watching horror movies, I'm just mm. feel like that's all I'm watching right now. Yeah. And so doing this is a nice little, you know, a, a, a bit of a, uh, you know, a Beaumont. I was going to say a Beaumont, but that's not the the right usage of that at all. It, it's a, a nice little uh, palate cleanser, like I, I said yeah. before, of like, you know. A moose-bouche. An a moose-bouche. That's exactly what I was trying to yeah, come up know, with. But, oh, man. We've been together too long. <laughs> uh, my, I, I'm so glad that you're filling in the gaps in my brain, which are only getting larger as time goes on. You know, I'm so glad that this is the point that you've chose to become a teacher. <laughs> right. When I'm just at my most addled. When I just don't even know words anymore. That's when I'm going to try to teach the young people. Yeah. <laughs> What's that thing with the... You, you, eh, you bang it together and papers. You mean a stapler? Yeah, that. Yeah. That's it, kid. That's right. Well done. E for you. Right. You, uh, there you go. Somebody, somebody's going home with a ribbon. Ooh, teacher's pet. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> right. All the other kids are throwing staplers at them. Um. <laughs> I do I, I do love this one of the, this version of Bo, the teacher, who forgets things, basically gets the student to answer it back, then berates him for being a teacher's pet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we are just around the corner, Duncan, from me telling classroom stories. 
Yeah. That oh is, yeah. That is going to happen. Oh yeah. Uh, I will not be able to name names, but I will absolutely. I cannot wait to hear the despair in your voice as you realize the generation you're about to hand the baton to. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, th then you'll, you'll know I've given up when I do name names. I'm yeah. like, this yeah. little motherfucker, his name is, his name is Jimmy Simonson. He lives <laughs> at 122 <laughs> Garden Court. I'll give you his zip. We need to dox the fuck out of this kid. He is, he's a real piece of shit. <laughs> nah, I know he listens to this show. Listen here, Jimmy, you're a real piece of shit. Here's the trick. Here, like I've got to go by a slightly different name. Oh yeah, you will have to. Yeah, I, 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 I'm assuming you're going to go under your your given name. That's right. So yeah. you know, a totally different email, totally different life, Duncan. Yeah. Where I haven't been just saying outrageous shit for decades. <laughs> For decades on a on a platform that records it so people can listen to yeah. it back and take clips out of context. That's right. That's right. I could get in all kinds of trouble for this. Um, but yeah, the school system don't know nothing about this. They're not looking for Bo Ransdell, they're looking for some other guy. <laughs> so that's okay, if it ever comes up, you're like that. No, I, like listen, I'm I, I don't know what this podcast thing is. I don't even know what a podcast is. And I don't know who this Bo that I don't know who this ruggedly handsome Bo Ransdell is that you right. keep talking about. I've never heard of the guy. Fortunately, I don't <laughs> outside of the podcast stuff, I don't have much of a social media presence. Mm. And I haven't done anything crazy there. Yeah, so it's that's really the check. Right. No one's sharing a podcast. Dude. Right. If, yeah. if if somebody's looking through like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, it's fine. I there's nothing there that is even controversial. Um, oh man, imagine one of your kids stumbling onto me and you doing the Twin Peaks stuff midway oh, through. Oh my goodness. Oh dude. I you know, secretly I would love <laughs> You her... couldn't explain it to an adult though. You couldn't yeah. sit down and say, No, listen, you need to listen to the you need to listen to all 120 recorded hours of us doing Twin Peaks to know the exact point where our brains break and we just start doing impressions and rewriting the script. Um, you use the word "god damn it" a <laughs> hundred a hundred and ninety three times in one episode. Well, yeah, that was a that was a big Brimley episode. Of course, yeah, I did. That was yeah, it was, the, the, we, that was when we were heavy in our Brimley fees. Yeah, um, it was like the it's like our was, blue period. Uh, <laughs> Because the moon was in uh, was in orbit of of Saturn, uh, which gave us maximum Brimley yeah. um, that we could only deploy at that time. So you got when the Brimley's flown, you got to go. Damn it! Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, it it would be funny though. Like the moment that uh, if like, the moment I, the moment one of your kids goes caca, right? If a, yes, if a kid actually did caca me. It would be both the proudest and most terrifying moment of my life, where I would be like, "Oh, how wonderful that that's going to live on, and how yeah. how sad it is that I've lost this career." Yeah, <laughs> sad as I'm unemployed. You're like a tear in your eye, but your asshole puckers up real tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that'll happen, you know, pretty soon. That's a thing that's coming. Mm, yeah. Um, Tasty. Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> it'll be fun. I you know the the thing that I'm relying on that I think I can pretty safely rely on mm -hmm. is that most of these kids don't give a shit what their teachers do and they're off. Oh god, a hundred percent. I didn't care what my teachers did when I went there, and like, they've got too much stuff to do. Yeah, yeah, they don't care about me. No. Uh, they're barely gonna listen to me, Duncan. The only reason they're gonna do that is because of the gun I'm gonna wave around. Yeah, I tell you what, they, they couldn't make Mr. Holland's opus now. Right, yeah, for sure. That'd and that guy was that. a creep. Yeah. <laughs> he almost slept yeah. with one of his students. Yeah, the clarinet girl. Yeah, yeah, people forget about that. They're like, oh, what he did, beautiful, beautiful boy. Like, yeah, yeah. what about when he was fucking that 16-year-old? <laughs> or coming close to it, right next door <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> there's a difference between fucking that 16 year old boy and almost fucking that 16 year old yes. right that turns that movie completely different you ask the catholic and church weird... it's the same thing duncan it's intent you've got intent you've you've committed the sin like george carlin said save yourself the trip you've already done it and, and, and fairness as well though i would say had he slept with a 16 year old student 
it would be less creepy than the implication that he was heavily obsessing about it. <laughs> it's that is a, a movie that two thirds of which is this like really sweet and touching film, <laughs> and one third of it is like full on stalker film. And and the fact that it's remembered kind of like you know through the hazy uh, tunnel of time. When I talk like, about this. I talk about this all the time, dude. Like, like I talk about like, it's when you talk about Gremlins mm-hmm. and you talk about how like dark Gremlins is, and everyone's like, "No, the Gremlins are like." Nah, 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 nah. You're like, "No, the whole the whole like dialogue in the middle where the dad dies in the chimney and they're uh-huh. like, what?" And you're like, "The whole bit where she talks about how her dad dressed up like Father Christmas, crawls down the chimney, dies there, and he isn't discovered for days," and they're like. That doesn't happen in that movie. It's like, it totally fucking right. does. The story, right in the middle. The story ends with her saying, and that's how I knew there was no Santa Claus. And you're like, well, I can't ever show this movie to children. <laughs> there a, you go. Yeah. It's, like, people have weird memories when yeah. it comes to detail. Right. Like, like, strangely, Dangerous Minds, the R-rated film about Michelle Pfeiffer teaching in the ghetto. Yes. Is, way more or way less problematic than oh, Mr. Yeah. Holland's opus. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like Michelle Pfeiffer wasn't fucking her students almost. No. She was just teaching them like how the love of learning. And this guy was trying to get it wet with an underage girl that happened to be good at the clarinet. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Duncan, where can people uh. find more out of you? <laughs> If they want to you know the other thing about that is, like, they spend an entire movie setting up the fact he was going to be a great composer, and the song at the end of that movie kind of fucking shitty. Yeah, exactly. um, it's not good at all. I'm like, this is why you taught. Like, it's true what they say. People... Yeah, that's hundred percent. Um, but yeah, you can check me. I'm going to get a T-shirt that just says "Mr. Holland sucks." <laughs> Hashtag not my opus, right? Um. <laughs> Oh, please. Hashtag not my opus. That's what one of the kids I teach could say to me and make me really proud. That's my that's my Mr. Holland's opus. Is hashtag not my opus. It's not my opus, god damn it. Uh-huh. Uh, that's it. And that, and that <laughs> way. Uh, yeah, please check me out with podcasts under the stairs. I'm almost finished summer series. I've got like two weeks left of it. Um, Bo's been on the episodes all this week, though. So um, they were a ton of fun to record. Uh, so fun. please, yeah, please come and check them out. Podcasts under the stairs can be found wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to our website, tputzcast.com, and that has all the shows for the Teaputz Collective, which is where to begin with Opera Omnia, Doing the Nasty, and Chronicle. Uh, yeah, wherever you're listening to your podcasts, other Teaputz Collective, Podcasts Under the Stairs. I look forward to returning in a few weeks' time for The Pink Panther Strikes Again. Oh, um... I don't know why I made it sound spookier. Oh. Oh. Um, hey, and if you want to hear anything more out of me, and especially because we're right around uh, the corner from the 31 days of Halloween starting, and that's where I drop yeah. a little mini review every ding dong day. Oh, he does life. them every day. I do them batched every 10 days because I ain't got bow time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just swimming in free time, Duncan. I right, listen, bow time, bow problems. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Bo money, <laughs> bo problems. That's what they say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so if you subscribe to either the Dark Parade or the Legion Podcast main feed, you can hear uh, those mini reviews dropping every single day in October. Um, and also Pick Six Movies, which I referenced earlier. Uh, mm. We are we are wrapping up the Michael Crichton season, which we called Crichton the Middle with You. And <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's right. Um and what you got what was your next movie on that? Uh the last movie was The Lost World. The Lost World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So you really have been you really just been getting booted in the balls with Jurassic Park movies. Yeah. That one at least has Goldblum gold blooming around. Goldblum's really good in it. And Julianne Moore's good. And Vince Vaughn's good in it. Yeah, and Richard Schiff. Like it's got it's got plenty of good actors. They just don't have anything to do in that movie. No. And even Pete Postlethwaite is great in that. Yeah, the, the the most dangerous thing in that movie is not the raptors, it's the tiny little chicken things. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, you just kick those little shits. 
<laughs> right. Peter Stormari like, getting it, yeah, like, getting it hard. It's because like, <laughs> he's a nihilist bull. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fucking nihilist. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, so that's happening on Pick 6 Movies. Our next one, we're, we are doing a, a spooky season Ooh, next season. Uh, it's called Deja U. Um, <laughs> and it is a bunch of remakes of horror movies. And we're start, oh fuck! We're start with the remake of Amityville. Ugh. Right, it's not very good at all. Um, Ryan so. Reynolds is too ripped to be in that movie. He's too attractive. He's too attractive for yeah. me to believe that he's a wounded man. <laughs> like at any point, <laughs> he's, he's too, too dreamy. He's too pretty to be crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're doing that, uh, and we got a whole lineup of of. Uh, Oh, you got like remakes. no, no, yeah, yeah. That's a that is a deep well that you can pick from there, right? And it's is it the ones that you would expect mostly, but yeah. also you know, Chad and I have fun with it, and yeah, uh, it, it yeah, is... sometimes sometimes the ones that are obvious are obvious for a reason, though. Yeah, it, like is it low hanging fruit? Of course it is, but that is yes. that is it is ripe and delicious fruit, and just. <laughs> Here, here, I'm very excited to see where we land on a Ryan Reynolds impression. Oh wow! Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, because he's he's trying he's trying to act in that one, and he's he's got better over time and yeah. more serious roles. But this was right off the back of him doing things like Van Wilder fucking party liaison. Yeah, you know, a movie that had chocolate eclairs filled with dog semen. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, it feels yeah, like a movie I ought to go yeah. revisit. But anyway, yeah, so check out all that stuff. And um, uh, obviously this show, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe to all the audio stuff over on uh, Duncan Bo Come Correct. You can find that on any podcast catcher. And uh, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of hours at this point. Oh God, at this point, there's like, like almost eight years worth of podcast. Yeah, yeah. Plenty, of, like all kinds of movies and shows and God bless you. Uh, I yeah. mean, it was a whole stint there. I was a robot. That's yeah. yeah. I mean, according to Duncan and Bo actual metafiction, yeah, you still well, are. Well, yeah, well, I'm sure there's. Well, I'm, I'm sure we have a wiki out there. Oh man, somewhere there needs to be a Duncan and Bo wiki. Can it be called the Duncan and Bicky? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not my Bicky. Um. Uh, anyway. I think that'll probably do it this time. All that is left for me to say is to say thank you. No, 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 no. A oh, Bicky yeah. in the UK is a biscuit. <laughs> a Bicky? Yeah, that's what they call it. It's like a, like a charming nickname for like a, a biscuit. biscuit? Uh, like, is a like, a, like a biscuit? Like a biscuit. we call a biscuit, like, right. not yeah, what yeah, you guys yeah. call like a biscuit. Like a biscotti. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you, you like, pass me the Bickies. Uh, can I have a little Bicky? Um, so <laughs> and now you've got this image of like, you being a biscuit. <laughs> I am just going to, I'm going to sample. You say, can I have a picky? And well, that is next time you speak reason. to Kate, next time you speak to Kate, you can fact check me. Like you finally have someone else you can fact check for all the all right. useless British stuff I throw your way. By the way, anyway, by the way, give me uh, something to repeat. Heart, Heart of Horror with Kate just dropped, which is us talking about the movie Orphan and also what what shits children are. Yes, and, they and, are, and it was fun. That was a, that was a fun time. Um, we're about to, uh, here's a whole reason for you to subscribe to the dark parade. We're about on the heart of horror episodes. Uh, we are about to launch into Kate's horror stories in and around the use of the app tender. Ah, and I can't wait. Well, I've, I'm, I was long past Tinder. <laughs> Yeah, I was exactly. Married before technology got to that point where you didn't actually physically have to speak to someone before you had sex with them. Yeah, and she is using it currently. So these oh. are fresh stories. Yes, of of her trying to find a decent human being to date on Tinder. So you know, I'm excited about. it. I can't wait to she, hear. She's about. we were saying Kate's trying to navigate men on the internet. That's right. And we are capturing it in podcast form. We're gonna it's a whole segment that we're still debating the title of the segment. Uh yeah. I I mine was Tinder is the flesh. 
Oh, I like that. Uh, but but there are a couple. Of, we're, we're, I'm not sure where we're going to land on it yet, but that's my vote right now. So uh, we'll see. Um, anyway, uh-huh. everyone, that's enough. Uh, thanks, everyone, <laughs> for, for listening. Thanks for watching. The only thing left to do is to say to my old pal, Duncan, say goodnight, Duncan. To say to my old pal, Duncan, say goodnight, Duncan. Oh. Yes, I did it. You heard me. Thank you.